All right, everybody, it's 6.30. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Give you another couple seconds to find your seats. <coughs> Are there any stragglers out the back door there? I see Tyler. All right, well, I'm uh, hereby going to call to order the Malibu Planning Commission regular meeting of February 20th, 2024. This meeting, excuse me? Yeah, where, oh, hang on, where is we Rebecca? Secretary. We do need a secretary, don't we? Parker, do you have any clue? We need, we need an administrative analyst. We don't need a secretary. Yeah. That is so true. Well, what we, need, well, what we need is a recording secretary. So, um, so she'll be right here. She'll be right here. I'm going to go ahead with this till we get to the actual business. Um, this meeting is being held both in a hybrid format that allows members of the public to participate in person or remotely via Zoom due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In-person participants, if you'd like to speak, please submit your request to speak form to the clerk before your item is called. Only in-person participants may donate or accept donations of time. If you're a member of a formal organization, you can speak up to five minutes if other members of that organization don't object. Remote participants, if you'd like to speak, please join the Zoom meeting printed on the agenda and raise your hand in Zoom when the item you wish to comment on is called. Commissioners, when you have comments, please raise your hand and I will call on you in turn so we can make our discussion clear for the record and the public. And um, I'm gonna ask for something momentarily. A roll call, please. Commissioner Leonard. Here. Commissioner Peek. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. Vice Chair Mazza. Here. Chair Hill. Here. You have a quorum. We have a quorum. All right. May I have an, uh, oh, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance, shall we? We shall. Who, who do we like to lead that tonight? Norm. How about Skyler? I love Norm's done it recently. All right, ready to begin. The Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America. America. To, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, Mr. Chairman. May I have an approval of the agenda? I'd like to move the agenda as, <clears throat> as staff recommends with item 4A continued to March 14th, 2024. Uh, I would like, I am going to recuse myself on item 5C. I would I also like to uh, adjourn the meeting in honor of Matt Rapp. And Can we have a second? And I would Chair, like to. Chair. I would. I would like to take five C and five, or not put five C last. Make it um, ahead of five B. I can't do that. I don't want to sit around for five I, I, I don't care. Well, okay. Let's vote. <laughs> How about that? So, so, gentlemen, so yeah, so we have a yeah. we have a, a motion by Vice Chair Mazza. I believe a substitute motion from Chair Smith. Excuse me, from Commissioner Smith. None of which have received a second. I, I, Chair, I, you, yeah. I will second John's and and. Yeah. Well, you were going to say something, Patrick, or that's oh, what yeah, you were I, I apologize, Vice around. Chair. You said March 14th. I believe it was March 4th. For the I second. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. That is March 4th. For, for 4A, right? <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. So we, we have Chair. the first mo Yeah. Oh. I just, we had a motion, and then we had a second motion. We hear the second motion first. We do. Do we have a second on the uh, second motion? I would like to second the second motion, okay. but the, my only reason... Uh, the only difference would be simply the ordering of the items. I'm absolutely okay with continuing the item as John referenced right. and um, uh, ending the meeting in honor of Matt Rapp. But and my, my reason for saying that we should hold them out of order is that I would like us to be able to get through the agenda and I foresee that one of the items is going to take a substantial amount of time. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily anticipate the wildlife project taking a long amount of time. Um, I could be wrong. But... Uh, so that's the reason for that. And that's where you're coming from, Dennis? That okay. is correct. So we and vote John, first. I am sorry that you would have to sit and wait uh, during that project. Uh, I'll just, uh, depending on the order, I'll just recuse myself from the other item. All right. So we, we have a, a vote passes. for the a vote for the alternate motion, which is to put the last item second to last. So for point of clarification, 
the new, the substitute motion is staff's recommendation, but hearing item number 5C prior to item number 5B. Is that correct? Correct. Roll right. call. Um, Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Peake? Yes. Commissioner Leonard? Yes. Vice Chair Mazza? No. Chair Hill? No. Motion carried. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so can you read the oh, order oh. of that again? Can I? So we're, yeah, we're, we're doing. Um, 5C wildlife prior to 5B Lachusa. So the first item of, after the consent calendar will be item number 5A followed by 5C followed by 5B. Yeah. Okay. I will, I will recuse myself from 5B then also. <clears throat> From the Lachusa item, yeah. Do you, yeah. well, it's a it's a just it's your call. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so there's no reason to make that decision now. You can we okay. will just cross that bridge when we get there. And then just for the record, the recusal for five C, if you don't mind, Vice Chair, based off of your financial interest in your in your residence. In that, I'm based in that. on I'm five hundred feet away, less than five hundred feet away, according to staff. Thank you very much. Okay. I have, and I just want to make sure, Rebecca, you got that we were continuing the one item to the date in March? Yeah. Okay. And you got that we're honoring Matt Rapp. Matt Rapp. Cool. Thank yeah. you. All right. So, there being no ceremonial presentations or, oh, report on the posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was properly posted on February 9th, 2024. Okay. Thank you. And now we're on to written and oral communications from the public within our jurisdiction, but not on the agenda. I don't have any speaker slips here. Uh, do we have any Zoom people? Oh, am I seeing slips down over there? Or those are blank? What am I seeing there? Possible speaker slip. Um, you, the, uh, Parker, do we have anybody on Zoom? In the no, meantime? there's no, no raised hands. Okay. Not okay. item 2A. All right. In that case, we're on to item 2B, Planning Commission and staff comments and inquiries. Who'd like to go? Start with Skyler. Uh, in the essence of time, I don't have any real comments other than I really appreciate the city staff being out there and keeping our roads clear, doing their best job to keep everyone safe, and the, as well as the sheriffs and fire. Dennis. And along those lines, I, um, I'm seeing a lot of... A lot of erosion, a lot of damage happening, a lot of slides. And we're going to have a lot of people that are going to be or are right now in a predicament or that they need, they're going to need some help. Um, typically on an emergency coastal development permit, it takes a while to get done. I know the, all the rules. We, we, their geologist shows up first. Our city geologist goes out. Once they make a determination, I feel that I know it's not easy, but I feel that because of what's happened and the amount of rain that we've got, people are going to need some help, and we need to try and get these things done a little quicker um, to try and go through the departments and, and get some help. However we can do that for our community, I think, is very important. So um, just food for thought for everybody out there who's ever watching. If you're in a position, um, I think it's something that needs to, to be done to the best of our ability. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Drew. No comments for tonight. I will also uh, stay quiet on this tonight. John, comment? Yeah. Um, on the emergency permits, I agree with Dennis that they need to be done as quickly as possible, but they also need to be processed through the final permit um, within a reasonable time. We've had some that have taken 16 years. So uh, Agreed. It needs to go all the way through to CDP. You're right. Yeah. Um, the other thing in reading the minutes back on October 3rd, 2022, Richard reported to us that they were investigating and buying new programs to uh, keep track of all the planning um, applications. And I just wondered if that ever happened and what's the status of it. Chair, would you like a response now or wait till the end? I'm the last comment. Yeah. So you're okay. next. Sure, go ahead. <clears throat> and John, you're done with your comment. I'm done right? with my comment, yes. Okay. Our IT department has been looking at the purchase of new software. The 
I think closest thing that we're going to get at this minute is we're receiving new software. It's called Bluebeam. It's for the purposes of reviewing plans, comparing old plans, and the idea is that our whole review process for both the planning department, the building and safety folks, the geologists, public works, coastal engineering, all of us would be using this software so that we could all work off of the same plan set. And then there is also a plan, once again, be across departments to purchase new permit routing and tracking software. However, that, um, I think the RFP, if I'm not mistaken, has gone out. We have uh, a vendor that has responded to us and we're working with that particular vendor, but I don't have a target date for that. So for now it's plans review software, which is, uh, in fact, we have a meeting tomorrow. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be in the next couple months. We'll have that at our desks. Thank you. Well, thank you. Richard, other comments? Not at this time, Chair, thank you. Okay, well in that case we are uh, cruising through 2B and we are on to the consent calendar. Okay. Uh, new items, approval of the minutes, to, that's the only item on the consent calendar. Do I have a motion? I move we approve the minutes. I'll second. A second? Uh, roll call, Actually, please. I should read uh, 10, 10, 3, 22, 6, 19, 23, and 12, 18, 23. That's good. Roll call, please. Vice Chair Mazza? Yes. Commissioner Peake? Yes. Commissioner Leonard? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. Motion carries. All right, so we're on to item four. Um, I'll just read the whole thing if you'd like, Adam, unless you want to, you probably have the whole thing ready to go. We don't need to read it twice either way. I think that 4A was continued. 4A was continued. Oh, 4A is continued, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, if I read the whole thing. So we're on to 5A. Uh, this is Coastal Development Permit Number 23-017, an application to replace two pedestrian crossing beacons and poles, installation of safety signaling, pedestrian crossing timers, and associated development. Take it away, Adam. Thank you, Chair. Good evening. Uh, as noted, CDP 23-017, uh, located at 22521.5 Pacific Coast Highway, which is within the right-of-way. So here's a look at the vicinity map, uh, the project areas between Carbon Beach Terrace and Malibu Pier. Just a zoomed in look at that uh, to get a better sense of the location. It's an existing crosswalk with uh, continuously flashing pedestrian beacons. Here's just a look at that from Street View. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. So the proposed project is uh, to remove two existing 35-foot pedestrian crossing signal poles with continuously flashing yellow uh, beacon lights to install two new 35-foot th uh, high pedestrian crossing signal poles with two traffic signals on each pole, as well as the installation of two new 10-foot high signal poles with si safety signaling for vehicles, installation of two new 10-foot high signal poles with pedestrian crossing timers, restriping the crosswalk in the same location, installation of one new controller cabinet for signal operations, uh, removal and replacement of the existing, existing service cabinet to provide power to the controller and signals, and finally the installation of a new underground conduit to power the controller and signals and associated cable to connect to existing controller for signal synchronization. So here's a zoomed in look of the proposed project which was just described uh, over overlaying on the satellite image, just to give you a better sense of the work that is involved. And here's a look at the plan sheet. Uh, just keep in mind that Caltrans inverts their plans. So north is south and south is north. And here's just an example of the, the type of installation that they're proposing, which is just further down PCH with these types of traffic signals and pedestrian timers uh, for an upgraded crosswalk for pedestrians. So Caltrans estimates the proposed project will be completed in 150 working days, and the project proposes overnight construction activity, which requires written permission from the city manager. So if approved, Caltrans will seek city manager approval for overnight construction activity. 
And with that, staff recommends that the Planning Commission finds that the proposed project is consistent with CEQA and approves the proposed project as conditioned. And I believe we have a team from Caltrans uh, zooming in tonight, so uh, they'll be available for questions as well. Okay, um, before we get to, to their presentation, if they have one, um, disclosures, anybody? Skyler? Oh, I've driven by the area multiple times <laughs> in my life, and I would just say that while I think that this is awesome, every time we add an intersection with stoplight, we seem to have more car accidents. So that's what my concern is. Dennis? I, I didn't meet with anybody. Um, no, I'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. Yeah, okay, Drew? No disclosures. Um, none other than Skylar's have been by there a million times. Slight exaggeration. Um, John? Yeah, I'd say 30,000 times. Um, yeah. And uh, I've, I've gone to the liquor store a couple times. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, so we have, we do not have Caltrans here in the room, right? They're, they're on Zoom? Yeah, they're on Zoom. Okay. Um, who, who do we have here? Do you have, are you There's all in one speakers, room? Speakers, Hmm? We, we, well, if, if they... There's no public? Is, does Caltrans want to make a, their own presentation or comment? Are you, are you multiple people? Who are you? Where are you? I only see one representative, Anna Johnson. Anna Johnson, can we hear you? Hi, this is Anna. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We just wondering if you'd like to make any uh, comments about the proposal. Hi. Yeah. Um. Uh. I don't want to make any comments. We don't have a presentation to provide, but there are some other staff members here. There's Ohanis, who is our project engineer, and some office chiefs and others. So, um, I'll give them a minute in case you see some other hands raised, but. As far as I know, we have no presentation and just wanted to be here in case any questions are asked. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll probably have some questions. Thank you. Um, John has a question. I've got several. Um, first, Skyler kind of hinted at it. This crosswalk goes to nowhere. Um, all the houses across the street are walled, and there are no there are no houses on the <coughs> on the land side of the street, no apartment buildings, just commercial buildings for about a, a mile. Is, is there not a bus stop on the ocean side? Don't have a clue. Um, but I'm wondering why, why, we, um, why we have one there to begin with, since the only business that is open to the public in that area is a liquor store and a pot shop. All the rest are offices. Uh, or a place that sells windows uh, that has its own parking. So I'm wondering why, as Skyler says, we have problems when we put in um, stoplights that don't do anything. So can you tell us why this particular spot has a, a light um, or, or needs a light? This is for Adam, right? Um, or it's for Anna? Also, well, if it's addressing... T the applicant team, I did want to mention that we do have another public speaker that has a hand raised in the virtual meeting. Okay, well, we, we, well let's do that first then. Let's hear the public speaker before we get to deliberation. Okay, we're hearing it's maybe another member of the applicant team. Ohana's answer Leon. Do we need, we should check with them unless you recognize the name. Well, somebody from Caltrans will recognize it, I would assume. I, yeah. I do recognize the name as a member of their group. I thought I saw a different hand raised a moment ago, but it seems to be lowered at this moment. Okay. Well, as long as we have no uh, public speakers apart from their group. Okay, so I guess... All right, so John, you were asking... Or I was asking, or first I need to know why we need a light, uh, or why we need a crosswalk, and then why we need a light. And Ad the, Adam, would you like to take this or defer to Anna? 
I'll just uh, utilize what they gave in their application, the reasoning for it. Um, they recommended the conversion uh, because of the high number of rear end accidents uh, when pedestrians use the existing crosswalk. That was that was their justification for it, but um, I will leave it to the Caltrans team to elaborate further. Do we know how many? I mean, I don't know. If, I've never seen anybody walk across there, so maybe. Uh, maybe I, I don't have the accident data okay. on hand, but I'm I'm sure the the Caltrans team does. Okay, <clears throat> Anna, can you briefly summarize an answer to that question? Um, I'd like to defer to Ohanis if he had his hand raised before. Um, I'm with the Environmental Planning Department, so I can't necessarily speak to the traffic safety um, reasoning behind um, or the traffic data behind the thing with crosswalk. But um, okay, let's try yeah, that. Oh, Ohanis, are you there? Can yes. You uh, good evening, everyone. This is Ohanis from uh, Traffic Design Electrical in Caltrans. Good evening. You uh, heard the question? Yes. Uh, the design was based on a traffic investigation report from our Office of Safety. And according to their study, there were 31 collisions reported from April 1, 2014 to March 31st, 2019. Types of collisions were as follows, three side, wide, only rear end, and four broadside. Three auto pedestrian and one other. Um, primary collisions were factors were eight following too close, five failure to yield, and five improper turn, and um, four other violations, uh, weather conditions. Uh, so we believe that if we remove the, um, if we replace the continuously flashing beacon with regular signal poles. Uh, the way this uh, regular signal poles work is that uh, the, the difference between regular signal poles, these ones are uh, whenever there is an on-call, when, whenever there is a pedestrian walking, uh, when they push the that push button, then it starts activating from, um, from green to yellow and uh, red. So, uh, in that way, we have a uh, we have a we have a safer um, uh, scenario in this case. So, if I could paraphrase what you're saying, or maybe reading between the lines, the uh, upgraded signal has is more clear in terms of whether traffic can flow freely or it has to stop, whereas the current system might be less clear, and that's what's occasioning the rear end collisions. Yes. Okay, and uh, there is also communication between the existing uh, uh, intersections, and uh, we have done from proposed. Uh, I, I have proposed from the, the new uh, controller, the existing controller, uh, with a new uh, interconnect cable, uh, and this is uh, done uh, with current ongoing synchronization project. Right. Oh, okay. Is that, is that I have a question. Oh, Johannes, we're, we'll have specific questions. We'll try to stay limited to. Um, John has a question. Yes. Okay. So we've had rear ends because you have to stop there. Um, would that be any different if there was no crosswalk and no light? Since there's probably a mile and a half south of that and a mile north of it with no crosswalks um, in the same situation? And they don't seem to have rear ends. The nearby uh, intersections have crosswalk, uh, one in uh, near McDonald's and then one in uh, uh, there's a law firm around there about 2,000 feet away. And there are crosswalks and they have signal poles over there. Right. I'm saying that in between, which is over a mile between them, you have a highway with houses on one side and businesses on the other, and no way to get across the road and no crosswalk and no signal, and you don't have rear ends. But you have rear ends where you have a crosswalk. So why is this particular liquor store receive more traffic than the rest of the highway as far as crossing the highway, and, and what is the necessity of having a crosswalk or a signal? 
Not that one is better than the other. The fact is, is one is one necessary. John, can I, may I add to that and just say, I think what what I want to understand, I think what John's trying to understand is what's the justification for the crosswalk being there? Because it's it seems like with the crosswalk being there, whether you have the flashing yellow light, which seems to apparently cause more accidents than if you have a red, yellow, green light. We have more accidents in the area because of that. Obviously, pedestrian safety is something that's very important to everybody here. If we must have the crosswalk, it sounds like we should have what is being proposed. But if there's, like John's referencing, other stretches of highway that actually have homes and businesses, and they don't have a crosswalk, and they don't have the accidents. So are we not better off just removing it is sort of what I'm understanding is being asked, and that's what my question for Caltrans is, is is this crosswalk somehow mandated to be in this area justified? Should it not move to where the beach access is if there needs to be one there? Because then that would be more of a reason for people to cross the street. Um, what's the reasoning as to why it has to go there, and what's the justification for it? And, and before we go to Caltrans, Adam, do, do you want to weigh in on this? Do you have a comment at all? Just to answer your, uh, your previous question about the bus stops, there are bus stops, according to Google Maps, on both the north side and the south side of PCH. And then there is a uh, public access to Carbon Beach just a few hundred feet away from that crosswalk as well, just some, for some context. Okay, but none, none, nonetheless, Skylar's question to is ask, To answer Skylar's question about uh, the particular location, from discussions with our public works director, um, what I was informed of was that what this does is breaks PCH into segments. And by doing that, this will be tied into our signal sync project which will allow for the ability to control or, or you know to control speeds and break up the flow of traffic so it does give us that benefit because of its location it creates so, those segments so it has a higher purpose than just that location that is correct okay so let me ask you this where are the other segments and we have plenty of stretches of coast highway that are much farther apart that have no crosswalks and no lights. We have many of them. So we have two crosswalks that don't have, don't have lights at the present time out of probably 12 miles. So why here? And, and why would you want to stop traffic here when the main stop in traffic is the next stoplight at McDonald's? That's where traffic really stops. So why would you want to stop it for 300 yards down the street, down the highway? The Caltrans would be better to get into the details of the engineering. What I can tell you is what I've learned from our public works director, which is, as we were reviewing this, was brought to our attention that it, it helps to create these segments of Pacific Coast Highway uh, between Pepperdine and Santa Monica so that there are more opportunities to basically control the flow of traffic. Okay, so let me ask you this. I'm just trying to get this in perspective. You leave Topanga, and you don't stop until Big Rock. What is that, five miles? No, it's... Three uh, miles? It's, it's about 1.7 miles. Okay, there are no, no, no crosswalks or stops. Uh, and we have tons of wrecks there. Um, then you go beyond that, <clears throat> same situation. Uh, why, it seems to me the minute you get near town, you're putting in cross, uh, you're putting in ways to slow down traffic when the real problem is where it's traffic's going fast. And <coughs> for example, how could you justify a signal and a stop light to go to a liquor store from a house? Um, essentially, versus going from uh, moon shadows to where everybody parks across the street, where we have, what, a wreck every month um, or two a month, whatever. Why would our, our public works department decide Vendome Liquor is the good place to have a crosswalk? That's my question. I mean, we. I think I think Richard has answered that already. That he has. He has. I don't think he has. That they want it. They want that specific particular node, 
I think your question is how come we don't need more nodes further down also? No, that's not my question. My question is this node seems to serve no purpose. Uh, and we have other places where we need them, and I think the only reason it's going in personally, and I, I need an answer, is because we have one there. Because Not that it, it was ever justified. Because it's an upgrade of, of an existing. Yeah. Ho yeah. Hold on. Did, yeah. <clears throat> did he not say that there was uh, bus stops there and that's why it's needed? That's was that not one of the justifications for it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I understand what Richard's saying in regards to the nodes and the synchronization, but essentially <laughs> by adding this, it's one more spot for somebody to press a button to mess the whole traffic flow up. <laughs> but, exactly. Exactly. Um, and I think that that's where John's coming from, is that we're trying to flow as many through there as possible. And I think that's what Caltrans ultimately wants to have happen, but they want to have it happen at a slower speed, which is not a bad thing. And by adding this node, it allows them one more opportunity to slow people down. All right. I so just don't, I'm just, I'm with John because I don't understand the justification for it going there, being there to me. If you needed to move the bus stop, move it down to where the beach access is. That makes a lot more sense than... Mm -hmm. Because that's where that's the main area where people are crossing the street, you know. By not right. putting it down there, they just run across. But if you, like safety wise, for as far as the pedestrians go, to me it makes a lot more sense to move it down um, right. to now, where the access is. We're, we're at least in my mind, we're starting to touch on a lot of different issues that are all kind of entangled here. And one of them that you just kind of raised that that's bothered me for a while that I think I understand now is with the synchronization, you have those sort of what can we call them, sort of the, the, the solid nodes, and then you've got these sort of more free-floating, on-demand nodes when there's somebody there pushing the button. And my wonder was, we're going to have more of these on-demand nodes like we have at La Costa, and then, you know, it's like, how, how that what has been explained to me is that, that, that those people waiting have to wait for the predetermined flow already and that the light will know when it's in that flow and but that means they might have to wait five minutes for their turn and that may be happening more so to me that raises another issue about like how long is somebody actually going to wait for that light before they go oh screw it i'm just going to run across the street well Look, if there's traffic flowing you're not just going to run across the street well and, and the other well, thing people do and they get hit <laughs> but again this light was proposed for safety not traffic control okay traffic control there in my mind, is unnecessary because it's already controlled in the summer. It's dead stop. Okay? Uh, but there is no parking to go to the access. Everybody knows that. And there are no employees. There's a couple at the liquor store, and you have a lot of other spots on Coast Highway where you have restaurants and places where people cross the street and Housing, there's no housing there for people to go to the beach. There's no apartments. So it sounds like you're both implicitly saying that it would, uh, the preference in this zone of the highway would be closer to the public access down by the old GTE building. If you have right? to have it or not have it at all. I, I know Drew had his hand up, but I, again, if it's mandatory that you have a crosswalk near a bus stop, I have a moot point. It, it doesn't, then it has to go in there. Yeah. And if it has to go in there, I very much agree with Caltrans that it should be the safer means of doing it. You shouldn't have the flashing yellow light, which I've witnessed that yeah. causes, you yeah. know, you're driving and then you're like, oh my God, because the person doesn't really, the person like steps a little out into the slow lane to like hesitate and make sure that you're going to stop. So I think it's more secure for a pedestrian to have yeah. the, you know, the actual red light for that. But I just don't understand, like, did they look at removing it? If it's room, like, how does that affect the traffic flow well, honest, and safety? We'll get to that question in a second. Drew, Drew wants to weigh uh, in here. To me, it seems like there's so many moving parts that any of these things that we're talking about are going to trigger. Um, maybe the placement of the existing is good from a quarter mile away. There's so many moving parts in regards to studies, and I don't know if the applicant has any additional information they could provide, you know, explaining as this being part of a larger plan for a PCH. Yeah, I, Craig, I want to just point something out on yeah. that. We don't know how many people use the bus stop because nobody lives there, okay? 
the only people I can contemplate using the bus stop are the local maids, okay? Now, there's bus stops all along the highway, all along the highway, that do not have crosswalks. Yeah. Uh, I'll Many just, of them. I'll just mention in passing, at Moon Shadows is a particularly tough one with the, the bus stop to nowhere on the, on the land side. Right. But, uh, to, uh, Ohanis, to Skyler's question, did you look at <clears throat> what the impact would be if you had no crossing here at all? Um, I would say uh, this is more of a convenience because uh, next crossing uh, would be one, one is uh, the south side would be near McDonald's, the other one in near the uh, near the uh, re uh, there's a air realty, Bush realty, and uh, it's about 2,000 feet away. So if somebody wants to cross, have to walk all the way. Uh, or is that area to cross the, the other side of the PCH. So I think the, to have the crosswalk in this area is a good idea and uh, access the beach area or or uh, if there is a bus coming there and then can go to the liquor store. So well, you said uh, to, to Bush, I think of that now as uh, Nicholas Eatery. What's the distance between there and Carbon? That seems like that's more like Close to About half a mile. Feet. Can, I, can I ask you a question? Wait, I'm sorry, sorry. Oh, honest. 2,000 feet. Oh, how many? 2,000 feet? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. has, the real question is, has anybody at the city or Caltrans ever done a crosswalk study on where they're needed and what the distance is between the spacing? Has that study ever done, or is this which I suspect is a replacement project. Well, uh, all our designs have been done per study. What we call is a tra traffic investigation report. And based on uh, uh, studies of accidents and also the distances, we look at in all angles. And this comes from Office of Safety before we get into the project. Okay, okay did the I'll, Office I'll, of I'll, Safety... Hey, 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 guys, let, let's try to keep it like one convo here. Did the Office of Safety identify any other locations in Malibu that need a crosswalk? Or a light with a crosswalk? What were you, you're getting to the notion of what is the priority? No, I'm getting to the notion was, did you study this light or Malibu? Or the safety of the um, highway? It's an ongoing project, uh, synchronization project, with the, which they have uh, installed uh, traffic signals. And uh, this is one of those nearby locations that I'm working on. Right, but I, my question is specific. Are you working on this location because it's a location of Caltrans crosswalks, or are you, work, are you working, did you study what is needed on the highway for crosswalks with lights. Did, did anybody look at, for example, the stretch between Topanga and Big Rock? Yes, uh, I believe so, because the, from one of the offices in Caltrans, Office of Safety, have looked at uh, uh, different locations for synchronization purpose and also, uh, as I mentioned, based on the study of the uh, collisions. Right, and that's and my question. My question is, you said the current locations for synchronization. I'm saying, what are the current, what are the locations needed for safety, not what we have now for synchronization? Did anybody ever look at why you would want a crosswalk at one liquor store when you have a location that's got a major bar and restaurant that has probably 30 wrecks a year. Uh, did anybody look at that, or did they just look at the fact that there is no crosswalk at at, uh, at Moon Shadows Restaurant, so therefore they don't need to synchronize? That's I mean, uh, the, uh, safe, I mean the, originally it was uh, there is existing this uh, existing system shows that there is a crosswalk. So the, probably that it was based on previous studies. Why do we need to have a crosswalk there? 
Okay, okay well, I've on... lived here 50 years, and that crosswalk's been there 50 years. So uh, it wasn't a very recent study. Okay, so we, we have we have a sense here that it, it may not be supported or supportable. Let's let's kind of hold that and let hear from Drew. If we do not approve this, we're going to be throwing off the whole synchronization schedule that they're proposing for all the stoplights. Why would that be? Is that true? Yeah, because they're going to put, someone's going to be pushing a button and, and setting off that crosswalk, and it's not going to be synchronized to the new system. This application is to have it coordinated with the, everything else. It would hey, need hey, to hey, be John, synchronized John, John, if there John. wasn't a crosswalk there. Adam, can, can you Where, explain the, this, how the synchronization, how these, these sort of <laughs> subservient signals fit into the structure of the more uh, permanently scheduled signals? Well, I'll defer to Richard with his conversations with the Public Works Director, but I think the idea is to have all these signals uh, in conversation with one another yeah. rather than just randomly appearing. Right. So then it truly interrupts the traffic flow in that sense, whereas if they're synchronized, there's a more synchronized flow to it all. Part so, of this application is for the infrastructure to synchronize this. Mike. Mike. Sorry. Part of this application is to synchronize that stop, uh, that intersection. Or that's uh, crosswalk. It's a, it's an my understanding is an ongoing project with Public Works to synchronize all the lights within the city of Malibu, and this is just the next one uh, since the project no came up. There. there okay. is no light there, correct? Well, if so you don't if, need to synchronize something that isn't there. All right. Okay. John, so I think Richard said it better earlier that they need a certain spacing to maintain the flow. If it goes too far, it they get people get going too fast or something. They, they need a periodic Wait, regulation. Question to Richard then. You can drive from John Tyler Road to Corral Canyon, which is quite a distance. Why don't you need it there? It's not, it's part, of not the part of the traffic. No, I know, but I'm just saying in general, there's a lot of spaces in Malibu. I'm getting the impression that this was planned because there's a crosswalk there. We're putting in synchronized lights, so let's throw a light in there just in case we need it. And that, to me, doesn't make sense because we don't need a crosswalk. So why don't we just throw a light anywhere? Uh, there's, there's no reason to cross there. Well, John, one, one consideration I think that we're, we're getting at sort of anecdotally is that the safer situation may be either no crosswalk at all or at the, f the full signal. So well, you, I, I, you have to come down on the side of, it, do, do we want to improve this kind of half-assed signal and make it a real one, or do we, you know, right? Or, 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 I, or there's, a, there's a C, there's an A, B, and a C. And the C and, is? And the C is, you're going to spend a couple million bucks on this. That's just what government stuff costs. Would you save a life if you put it in a moon shadows? Would you save a life if you spent six months? I, I think you'd save that? a lot of lives if you put one in at El Matador, but that's besides the point. Yeah, yeah but it's not besides so, the point because the cable's going by there. But, you can stub it out and put the light in. Okay. I mean, that's the way it goes. True. I'd like to make a motion that we approve 5A and... There you go. Okay, okay. I'll second it for discussion. For discussion. Yeah, I'd like to make a second motion that we send the item back to the Public Works Department to determine the needed locations for signals on the new fiber optic line and at least stub them out at those points so and come back to us with a proposal. I'll second that for discussion again. Okay, so but I was gonna ask a question of our city attorney. Please. So. We sort of have two different, my question for you is what is our options here and how do our options work if we want to go back, ask staff to say, go back, study whether or not this location is even needed and if it's needed, okay, we agree it needs to, you know, synchronize with everything else and have the proper, you know, uh, lights there and everything. If it's not needed, then we want it removed. So what's the best way for us to go about that? Well, so as an initial matter that the city's public works department we, we are not the applicant for this for this project it is it is it is caltrans now of course we are in you know connection with them we try our best to partner and sync up for the lack of a better term no pun intended to ensure that hey what is kind of good for caltrans is also good for the city um and so 
you know, the direction necessarily wouldn't be to for Public Works to go study that and redesign it. If the if the will of the commission tonight is that, hey, we're kind of unsure about the requisite need or information surrounding this, the direction would really be have or or just have staff work with Caltrans to get more information based off of the direction because as I said, Public so, Works Department didn't design this project. Public Works didn't say, hey, this is it. And so that, I would like to I'd motion. like to amend my motion to say Caltrans instead of Public Works. And I want to point out that we had a big meeting maybe a year or two ago, and I think it's on our agenda here that they wanted to put in a crosswalk at uh, Malva Seafood. And we determined we would kill a lot of people. So they came back and they're now going to put it under the highway. Okay? So there is a reason and there is a way to do things properly. And we don't we have fifty four million dollars in the next thirty five years to spend on the highway of Caltrans money, of Metro money. And if we spend five, ten percent of it on this, we just wasted it, in my opinion. And and you're an electrician, Skyler, I am sure that the synchronized line coming up the highway is not, can be stubbed into, uh, because if it can't, we're really got a problem because we're going to need changes in the future. True. Dennis is before me. Go ahead, Dennis. Okay, so having worked out in these roads, uh, other roads and areas, and worked with Caltrans and situations like this, I. I like your idea, Vice Chair. Um, we do need crosswalks in a couple other places, but they're not going to put them in. And the reason they're not going to put them in is because they don't have safe, safe access to get there. You need curb and gutter, and you need sidewalk to safely walk to your crosswalk. Just as simple as it was for me at Tuna Canyon to put in uh, a bus stop, the concrete, the bolting down the bench, the trash cans, and everything that came with it, and the signage, just so they'd have there's no sidewalk anywhere else, you know, anywhere, but you've got it there. So if you end up trying to put the crosswalks just like at moon shadows and you put them in these places, these god awful places we know where bad things happen, they won't because there's not a safe way to get there. So you have to hang on, hang on. You have to walk through the dirt. You'll have to to get to that light. It won't be a safe passage. And I think one of these folks up here may agree with me. Maybe they won't. But that's that's what I know from working with, with these people. Well, Caltrans proposed doing it at Malva Seafood. There is no sidewalk. Okay? Yeah, but they at, would at, put it in. At, at, oh. at, at Big Rock, on the, <laughs> Point on, to be made. Yeah. on the east side of Big Rock, they put in nothing but a concrete curb cut by the signal so they could put a button. And it's, it's, it's like a button to nowhere, though. Nobody ever walks on the land side south of there, or east of there. I think that's my question, too. Yeah, uh, Drew. Uh, it's for Richard. When's the synchronization project going to be done? If you give me a moment, I can look to see if I can get a date from our public works director. Okay. okay. In the meantime, well, I, 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 well, I, I, I was just going to say, if we do not approve this and the whole synchronization plan that we have will be thrown off, by someone pushing that crosswalk button to cross up at that intersection. There is we no button. We don't yeah, there so. is a button there. There's absolutely. It turns the light red. Flashes the light. Yeah, flashes the light. If somebody yeah. jaywalks, it's going to turn it off too. All right. So, so your light. your point is that the way it's configured now, it's it's a wild card, and it needs to be tamed. It needs to be part, I, if there's going to be a crosswalk there, it needs yeah. to be part of the, the project. I, I, I very much agree. I think we all agree with Drew that if it needs to be there, right. then yes, this is the way to go about it. Right. The question that I'm stuck on before we even get to that point is does it need to be there? Yeah. And that's that's where oftentimes we are going to try to fix a problem that we've like created and we could better be better fix the problem by removing the problem. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. For the sake of argument, I have a couple other points to kind of take as an assumption that, that we would be putting it in, just to kind of cover the territory here. Uh, the question, one question, what is the camera system that's specified on sheet E2 and drawn on ED3? It's, there's a camera that's in, and uh, 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 this would be for Ohanis or Adam, if you can answer this. 
Um, it's there's a camera installed just bef just below the luminaire arm. Um, is this something that's for the operation of the yeah the car? The, it's so we're. It's a motion, so we're, we don't use the in-ground sensors anymore. We're using cameras. They have a, they're going to have a they're going to have a guy sitting downtown LA with little buttons changing the lights. Okay, so that's, that's what, what the cameras for. were. So, question one, well, more, bro more broadly, if if we did this, what opportunities would we have to condition this, or not that we can redesign it, but based on the location, what could we do with this that would enhance the uh, speed calming things that we've been talking about for the past few months here that probably this wasn't even designed with that in mind. But is this like, for example, is there something we could do with it to like bigger, flashier lights or uh, more something that that signs that just clue people into the notion that you, the, you're coming, the next mile or so that you're hitting here on the highway is going to be a really dangerous zone and you need to really pay attention. Could we, could we integrate some of that message with this structure that we're already talking about putting up? And I guess this would be a question for Caltrans. Uh, did you understand that, Ohanas? Have you been following all the... the yes, uh, actually in our design shows uh, uh, for synchronization purpose, we have a camera there and then we have a fiber optic connection. Uh, with DCRS, uh, which synchronizes with the uh, nearby intersections. So uh, that way also uh, provides information uh, to the center of the city of Malibu. Uh, okay, but our, could, could we, if... Can I state it for you another way? So let, me, let, me, let me state it a few ways and then you can. Um, could we, was there space to put a sign on there that so, says something like, Traffic monitored by cameras, or you know, we're c coming to a slow zone. Be extra cautious. Or I don't know what the language would be, but or how about elsewhere where you've done traffic signalization? Yeah. What is the signage that goes in place that gets people to slow down? Could, could could we add some 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 value added here if you're doing the project? Is there something we could do to to help slow traffic? More more messaging to add to it. Yes, it's possible. Uh, we, we can add to the to our plans uh, or more warning signs. So this would be something for public works to coordinate with, right? To say, you it's know, well, I mean, public works could tell them what something about the discourse we've been having in the city for the past months about safety and slowing people down on the highway, and, and maybe help give Caltrans some ideas about what would be helpful to to add to this. Well, Craig, in a lot of places, you'll see when you when you're on a curve or something, you'll see big signs flashing, "Stop ahead." Right. Okay. Well, we don't have those in Malibu. We we, we have it at Big Rock going okay, east. Okay, maybe a Big Rock going east. But again, this is all coordination of what's safe. The real question here is, nobody's ever done a count on how many people walk across that crosswalk. Yeah. Okay. Where are they going? Okay, so I, I think that the basis here is we, we don't feel like we have a clear justification for anything on the site yet, other than maybe what Drew is saying that we need the node for the synchronization, but that's not even clear yet. No, no I think I, I mean, it's totally clear that it's camera I, and uh, fiber optics are going I think, in. No, I think that no, we, I think to that we didn't it. make it totally clear that if the crosswalk is warranted in that area, that it needs to be a crosswalk that has a red, yellow, green tied into the synchronization. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we're all in agreement yeah. on that. Yeah. If we can get more signage to make it safer, I imagine that we're all in agreement on that. But before we even get to that point, we have the issue of whether or not that crosswalk should remain there, whether or not it gets used or not. And until I get an answer for that, or a more substantial answer, I'm not really comfortable saying, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. And if there is any n need to articulate another more solid note in the synchronization, like you're suggesting, then 
It could be, well, in that case, that, let's put it at the, where the coastal access is or, you know, or at Tremonto. And if it's warranted, does it not make sense for it to move to the coastal to access? Different, well, yeah. I wouldn't pick a spot because we don't know. No, exactly. That's what I'm saying. We don't Leave pay. that to the professionals to say yeah. this is where it needs to go. So, so, and the other side of it is that, okay, now we have to do it and build it. Um, there's some talk in here about the construction happening at night. I absolutely think that it should happen at night. How it takes 150 days to restripe and put in a couple signs is beyond me, but I know it's more complicated than that. Um, so I just wanted to say that we should definitely make the suggestion to our city planner that Caltrans is willing to do the work at night, preventing, uh, provided that they get the approval from our city manager. So we should make a recommendation that they do do the work at night. Can, can I, on that point, Adam, do you know when Caltrans did the work at Big Rock recently, they sent out a survey to neighbors about their preferences of day or night or what would, I don't see that that, that was done here. There are no neighbors. I, I, I don't believe they're offering that service for this given the level of construction that was proposed at Big Rock compared to this. Uh, that was gonna be some serious disruptive soldier that piles that are going into the ground and, there. Yeah, right. Whereas here they're just replacing the, the poles essentially and installing a couple right. new ones. Okay. Dennis so, is a question. Dennis. What's his name, Ohanis? Ohanis. <clears throat> Ohanis. My question is, since we're talking about future stuff, are you guys putting in hand holes along the way? Are you putting in just a, the smaller 12 by 16 box? Are you doing some 20 by 30s for bigger stuff? Are you did you guys think ahead enough that in case as vice chair uh, Maza has mentioned maybe a light goes in, maybe some kind of uh, another function can go up, lighting, signs, all that. You got, Did you guys plan all that? Yes, we have uh, uh, next to the controllers, we put uh, what we call is uh, five, six full boxes. Uh, and next to the signal poles, we propose uh, type five full boxes where the cables and the conduit go to uh, to the signal poles. And, and so if uh, we, we've been talking about getting uh, speed cameras possibly in town, uh, this would have, could, could have some mounting ready for that kind of, yeah. Yeah, Drew? I know like in cities of like Glendale, they have blinking what, tread, tread lights. Is that what? Yeah, yeah. On, on the treads, on the crosswalk. Yeah, yeah on the street. I don't know if that... Were you guys going to... Were, were oh, Hannes, were you guys going to propose lighting the actual crosswalk and have that flashing too or not? Down on the road surface? Well, we... we uh, you mean like a, like a speed feedback signs or... No, not speed feedback signs. You know how some of the crosswalks have... Um, not the... What are the little things that are on the road? The reflectors? Yeah. And the reflectors oh. light up when somebody goes to walk across them? Bots dots. Bots dots. But like LEDs. That flash... You familiar with what I'm talking about? Yes, uh, those are called like smart pads. Like, uh, you know, like there is a sensor when uh, somebody wants to cross uh, and it starts lighting. Yes. Is that something that's going to go in here too or no? Did we lose you? Yeah, he dropped off of uh, Zoom. Well, okay. Uh, all right, so no, 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 no. Yeah, um, as far as I know, the the um, flashing lights that are in the pavement that you're talking about are not part of this project. That's not part of what was do, proposed. Do we do we know if there's a reason why they do or do not use those on PCH? That's not something I could speak to, but I could follow up and um, ask the you know engineer or our traffic safety team um, if, if that's an option to, so, to implement that here. But um, so, it also sounds like the main question is getting at um, determining whether this crosswalk should be kept or not, and then we could move forward from there. Correct. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's the direction that we're leaning, so you Skyler, very much understand uh, as that. As far as the lights on the street, um, those are very common in Laguna, but you have to remember, who's going to cross the street at night there? Okay. No, they work during the day. What? Those things work during well, the day. But what they, our, they, they work 24 7. But, but our I, problem in Malibu is rear ending a lot. A lot of our accidents, I think 36% or something, are rear ends. And that's not why they rear end people. They, they're just not looking. I understand. If, if we can have an extra visual to prevent somebody from getting hit in a crosswalk and Caltrans is willing to utilize it, I think we're foolish not yeah. to utilize it. Yeah, okay. no, so I understand. I, I, I think we're, we're, but we're, we're getting down to. 
we're missing the big picture yeah. when we start designing the, the things flashing in the, the light over here and the light over there. The, the, Where should it be? It's an expensive thing. It's a safety feature, and it appears to be just a replacement feature. Okay, okay. if I can clarify uh, John's motion and bring this all together, we're, we're, we are talking about some bells and whistles and things, speed cameras, lights, et cetera, that is, is useful, I think, for Caltrans to understand that those are things that will be useful if and when and where we want this kind of system in place. But the, your motion is let's have some more justification about what exactly the need is. And, and where, and assuming, and if it needs to be somewhere, where, and if it does, then it probably needs to be this super crosswalk that we're talking well, about. Well, yeah, I want to expand that to not just the need for this light, the need for that crosswalk, okay? But, correct. That Both, location right? is it the safest, is it the best, best place to put it in that section of the highway? I, I, do you guys want to modify a motion to continue this to a date certain, or what do you guys want to do? Well, I, I, the motion was to have them come back. I don't know if it, yeah, it I don't does think to they, a date certain we, because they, they have to do their study. We would continue it to a date uncertain yeah. because okay. we don't know when that is yeah. going to happen. But I think that the, the main thing, you know, provided we go that direction, which I think is wise, is for Caltrans to take away is like, check and see whether or not there is justification for this, or if the justification for this means it moves a certain distance down the row in either direction from, you know, it would make more sense if it went closer to the beach access to me, but I'm not a traffic engineer or pedestrian it, engineer. If anybody uses it, I think the example is just to say what they did at, at uh, Malibu Seafood was what we want them to do here, put it in the right place. Malibu Seafood, if we had approved what they proposed, we'd have a couple dead people right now. Well, I don't think they're going to put one under the road here, but if it does need to move, no. then it needs to move, or if it needs to go away, it should go away. Dennis? Um, I'm, I, if we're going to, if we're going to move this forward or continue it, I would really like to see a representative from Caltrans come here. Yes. You guys need to be here. I mean, we, we're a pretty friendly bunch. We'll, we'll talk to you, but it's a lot better when we can look at you. And uh, I think we'll get answers better and everybody will understand better. Yeah, so if you can do that, that would be a plus for you. And, and I would also, I'd also like to make a comment like that, and that is that the big concern in Malibu is we've got 15 million people driving through and 9,500 9, residents, and it's an unsafe highway, <coughs> as declared by state of emergency by the city. And we need... We need consideration other than engineering. We need safety considerations, and we need uh, utilization studies. We need a plan, not just a repair. And, this, and when I look at this as a repair. And, and to be clear, the justification mm. on the, the collision study stuff that we heard already, that to say, oh, we need it there because we have accidents there, we need to get a little deeper because Certainly some of those accidents there are precisely because this crosswalk has been there. So let's, let's get a little more resolution on that study. Okay, so let's call a question. Yeah, let's, so can, Patrick, can you clarify the motion? If I may real quick, though, jump in, Chair. To answer yeah. Commissioner uh, Leonard's question, the target date for the completion of the signal sync project is December of this year, and ideally, if it is going to be late, no later than... March of 25. And I have a question for you. Once it's in, is, this high, is the highway static from then on, or can lights be changed, lights added, and lights removed? I assume a fiber optic cable is like any other cable. You can, uh, you can add a light, you can take a light out. And, that, that's uh, what the handholds are for, right. uh, Vice Chair. Okay, so the completion date doesn't really matter in my opinion. No, the only thing that's being held up is this intersection, or this crosswalk. Right. All right, so uh, Patrick, can you clarify the motion for or whatever you have there for us? Sure, so. The, uh, I'm the, sorry. Uh, oh. I'd like to. Rebecca, my, you're. I'd like to I was just going motion. to mention that the applicant has had their, Anna Johnson, I believe, has had her hand raised for quite a while, as, oh. as well as Ohanis. Oh. 
Well, do you want to throw anything back to them? No, I think I think I think we're getting organized here ourselves. Anna, you've heard where we're going. Do you have a brief comment on on where we're headed? I think she's gone. She did. Okay. Is she? Maybe she's clicking raise hand, lower hand, raise hand, low. Like some people. Can you do. hear me now? There she is. Yeah. Hi. I have nothing to add. It sounds like we're going to be doing some follow up information sharing and um, taking note that it's helpful um, to have a traffic safety representative here in person. Yeah. Um, for this discussion. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your time. That's good. Ohanis, do you have any any uh, comment on where we're heading? Uh, yes, I agree with uh, Anna Johnson. Uh, I think uh, we have to do more uh, research on why we need the uh, crosswalk there. And then uh, if we need it, then uh, I believe our project will, will be very um, helpful in this area. Right. And, and you might find that this helpful project could end up being somewhere slightly different. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Here's the um, motion. Patrick? And so I just want to be sure. So it was the, the original motion was by Commissioner Leonard, seconded by and Commissioner Peake. Yeah, the substitute motion was made by Vice Chair Mazza. And did I hear a second? If I missed it, I apologize. Yes, I seconded, but Drew would like to amend his original motion. Is, is this well, not well, I'd like to amend mine to continue this to a date uncertain. Okay. Well, that's then, my motion. That's your motion. Oh, sure, no, 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 no. you got it. Yeah, sorry. And, I'll second. Johnston. Sure, okay, we well, have the second. So, Vice Chair Mazza, give me, and I, I will turn it over to you after I read it. So, so we directs, have a, a merged yeah. motion. Correct. It directs staff to work with Caltrans to provide further justification and analysis on the following issues. One, the need and efficacy of this crosswalk in this specific location and the optionality for other crosswalks in the vicinity, not Hang on. City. Oh. Hang on. The need for any crosswalk in this particular location. The need for of, of this, okay, sure, of, of any crosswalk. And then the options for additional traffic safety measures at any any crosswalk in, in, in the vicinity. In, and, in and the, that is justified. In the uh, uh, cable zone or whatever you right. want to call that. That is the, correct. The, the, okay, that's my maybe, motion. Maybe Let's like sub, the, the, the supplemental traffic safety measures. No. I, 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 well, they can. That's I said, part of their I said additional supplemental oh, okay. also works okay. as well. Okay. All right. Let's vote. All right. Call the roll, please. Vice Chair Massa? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. Commissioner Leonard? Yes. Commissioner Peake? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Well, that was uh, a little hashy, but uh, we've got some consensus and uh, we'll work through some things. So thanks, guys. Um, uh, any appetite for a break? No, not yet, probably, right? So, um, where are we? We're then on to, we're going to... 5C. 5C. Okay, and I am recusing myself from 5C because of state requirements of 500 feet uh, residency. And you let me know when you're done. Okay. Um, so he's leaving the room. We have some speaker slips. Um, let's see, I'm make sure I've got my notes in order here. These things have been shuffled around a bit. Um, right. Okay. Um, Oh, this is Tyler. Okay, Tyler, would you like to uh, read the introductory? Yeah, this is for Coastal Development Permit Number Twenty Two Zero Four Nine, Site Plan Review Number Twenty Two Zero Two Seven, and Minor Modification Twenty Three Zero Zero Two, and Demolition Permit Twenty Four Zero Zero Seven, an application to demolish an existing single-family residence and construct a new single-family residence and associated development. Okay, um, let's do some disclosures first. I would like to just first mention um, that I went and saw this on Friday and I picked up John on the way under the impression that he wouldn't have to disclose because I didn't realize how deep his lot is and it was much closer to the site than 
at least I was aware. Um, and it's like a 90 second drive from his house to the site and we just had small talk and once we got there we were with the applicant the, the, the entire time and then I drove him back 90 seconds and it was small talk again. So we didn't have any substantive um, coordination in our discussion apart from that. But having done that, uh, I think it would be uh, just safe to ask the applicants. Uh, do, do we have applicants here in the room? Yes. Down here. Um, just as a, as a matter of form, I should ask you if you would like a continuance to process this new information that, that he and I visited and could conceivably could have chatted about it for 90 seconds, but I, honestly, there was nothing that, that we had to share in, in my view. You're, you're good to go. Okay, I just and, wanted to I'd give you that option as a right. matter of form. And, and so, Chair, if yeah. I may kind of buttress that a little bit, yeah, just please. for the applicant's clarification, it's going to be a bit pedantic, I apologize, but it's a state law that says if your property is within 500 feet, you're not allowed to participate in any decision. There is con some confusion about property line to property line as compared to actual physical structure, i.e. house and yours. And so that's why there was some potentially initial confusion. Um, as Chair Hill stated, Vice Chair Mazza did not provide him any information that's not in the record before you all, that isn't before the rest of the commission. He didn't advocate, he didn't you know, direct Commissioner, excuse me, Chair Hill in any way, shape or form. So that's kind of the reason for this, for this preamble. Thank you very much, Chair. That's correct, thank you. Other disclosures? Um, I visited, not recently, but uh, the site in the, in the past. It's been a while. Um, I did a very small amount of work on this house for the owner, uh, an emergency, very small job uh, during the Woolsey fire, uh, just to get some power on to them. Uh, but that no way affects any of my decision making tonight. Okay. Dennis? I met with the architect and Ms. Honor. Uh, I know the applicant socially from surfing, and that's about it. I did not go by. Okay. So, and, and so, Chair, yes. I apologize. And I just want to confirm, Commissioner Peak, for the record, of course, that work was well past the 12 month uh, uh, standard articulated by the FPPC. So, this was yes, many years, years ago. Yes. Got it. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, with that, Tyler, take it away. All right. Thank you, Chair Hill. Members of the Planning Commission, next item tonight is a proposal to demolish the existing single family residence and uh, development of a new single family residence and associated development. Uh, this project is located in the Point Doom neighborhood. It's east of Wildlife Road. It is not visible from any scenic area as indicated in the LCP. And this property was originally developed in 1959. The project proposes the demolition of the existing single family residence, the construction of a new 6,889 square foot, two story residence with a 1,622 square foot basement and 1,249 square foot attached subterranean garage. There's a driveway, perimeter fencing, a swimming pool, spa, some decking in the backyard area, uh, some new landscaping, dark sky compliant lighting, um, 6,800 square feet of impermeable surfaces, some open air trellises, a water feature, uh, retaining walls, and an on site wastewater treatment system. The application is proposing, or the applicant is proposing, a site plan review for construction up to 24 feet uh, with a flat roof and a minor modification to reduce the front yard setback up to 50% the required amount. Uh, so here is the proposed site plan. The two-story residence is an L shape with a, a centralized backyard area. As mentioned, the applicant is proposing a minor modification for the reduced front yard setback. The setback would be consistent with the neighborhood character as other nearby homes have similar front yard setbacks. Here is the proposed slope analysis. The project was designed to uh, avoid four to one slopes, which are protected in the Point Dune neighborhood. Uh, the four to one slopes are indicated in yellow here. They lie to the south. The project proposes a site plan review for a height above 18 feet, up to 24 feet in height for a flat roof. Uh, the project complies with the LCP's height requirements and also the two thirds rule. Um, 
as shown here, a subterranean garage and basement is proposed underneath the first floor. Here's just a rendering looking uh, northwest. Uh, as mentioned before, the project is situated on the flatter portions to avoid the four to one slopes. So in January, we went out and documented the uh, story poles. Um, here's a view showing the relationship of the neighbor uh, to the proposed development. Uh, to date, we have not received any complaints about uh, potential impacts to protected views, uh, and there are no impacts uh, anticipated on the site as it is centralized in the Point Doom neighborhood. Here are just some additional site photos uh, that will show um, the increased massing and um, height of the structure. So with that, staff re recommends approval of the project as proposed and uh, we're available for any questions. Thank you, Tyler. Um, now we have the applicant. Would you have a presentation or you've got 15 minutes, however you'd like to use it. And if you, uh, you can reserve some for rebuttal if there are, um, let me just tell you whether we have any, do, are there any um, hands raised online? There are no raised hands. Okay, um, just looking at, uh, all right, so we, we do have one comment that I can read in after your um, presentation, so you might reserve a little bit. All right, thank you, Chair Hill and Commissioners. I would like to receive, reserve two minutes for rebuttal if necessary, thank you. So I am pleased to be here before you tonight representing this, this home, this beautiful project. Uh, Mr. Miller is proposing to demolish the existing 50 plus year old single family residence. And he's gonna replace it with a new home for himself. The new home will meet all of current codes and requirements. It'll meet the improved and advanced building codes and fire codes, as well as install a new advanced on-site wastewater treatment system. The project is proposed conforms with all city codes inclusive of the site plan review and the minor modification. This has been discussed in detail in the staff report and all the findings have been made. The owner concurs with all of the staff's findings and accepts all of the conditions of approval that are contained in the staff report and the resolution. And this project has received no opposition that we've been made aware of. So the owner, Dax Miller, is here tonight. He has planned and worked on this dream home of his here for, in Point Doom for many, many years. And I would like to invite Dax to the podium to talk about his home. Thank you. Okay, you can, you can toll the clock. Good Welcome. evening. Uh, I think I want to reserve uh, two minutes. I'm not going to be too long, but just in case. So I'll add an additional two. Um, so good evening, Chair Hill, uh, commissioners. I just wanted to start by thanking Tyler and his staff for working on this with us, because I know sometimes it can be a pretty thankless job and difficult, but he uh, made it relatively painless. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, before we get into the project, uh, some of you don't know me, so I just thought I'd give a little background history. Uh, I've honestly, I've been surfing here for over 35 years. Um, I love Little Doom, always have. Uh, I loved it so much as a teenager that I got a job on Heathercliff uh, helping carry nails to frame out the post office building and saved all the scrap so that a bunch of my buddies and I could build the hut down on the beach. I know that would never happen today, but it was a lot of fun back then. And uh, one day I said to myself that I would live here, um, own a home here. That took me 20 plus years, but I did it. And so here I am before you tonight. And I just kind of wanted to let you know that that was my dream. This is no spec home. This is 
nothing else other than my personal home for me and my family and wildlife. I personally have a thing for that particular street that I like a lot. I don't know why, maybe it's just because it's uh, above Walnut Creek between Zumarez and wildlife uh, where I used to surf. And um, yeah, it's sentimental to me, it is, but that's what a home is. So uh, I've always been connected to the point I was not born into it, but I think that uh, that says something. I think that's partially why when Woosley hit, uh, I was one of the guys who stayed back with the whole group uh, and uh, for two weeks, all day, all night, put out spot fires. Um, I love the neighborhood. I protected it and uh, I would do it again. Um, I even went so far as to coordinate a bunch of boats and supplies at MDR, uh, ran supply lines with uh, Keegan and the boys. I'm sure you guys have all heard the stories. You all know them off Paradise Cove and set up everything at PDE and Zuma headquarters. And uh, for me, that was a life changing event. So um, I think it should be noted that uh, I'm also a member of the Malibu Arson Watch Volunteer Program with Hidden Hills Sheriff's Department for Point Doom. So every time we get one of those red flag warnings, I am out there with the team reporting and keeping eyes on it. So once again, uh, just taking care of my neighborhood. Um, I, like I said, I've been wanting to build my own personal home here for a number of years, and um, it, just, it just means a lot to me. So uh, more about the actual property itself. Okay, the nuts and bolts. Um, the pool, the decks, uh, even when I first purchased the house, I immediately removed two of the decks. Uh, I just don't see any need. I'm not a person that needs a ton of hardscape or any of that for multi-purpose. I don't need it, I don't want it. I'd rather enjoy uh, the greenery. Uh, it happens to be, uh, if not one of the oldest, the oldest, I'm pretty sure, house in the neighborhood. Uh, it's definitely the smallest footprint uh, for the actual home itself right now. Um, I'm under half of the allowable and permeable hardscape as it is. That's what I'm asking for is less than half of really what a person could do. Uh, the pool's located exactly where the bocce ball court is now, so I didn't throw it out somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Um, the increased heis, height is a minimal it's absolutely not visible from any public areas whatsoever, and the flat roof design is intentional. When you have a peak roof, you can always see it poking up across you know, your neighbor's street. It's a nice architecture, but for me personally, I wanted to keep it low profile and down and tight. Uh, the design itself, the L shape, uh, that's intentional as well. It's for sight and sound. We all know how much sound carries down through the gully. <laughs> you can always talk to somebody at night if it's quiet across the gully. So the design of the home is intentionally directed towards the ocean, not to the right, not to the left, not out in the front. So all of my conversations and my family, while we sit at home, uh, are going to pretty much be keeping the peace, if you will. Uh, I know somebody mentioned that there's a roof deck. Technically, yes, there is, but it's literally this big and don't laugh, but we have small dogs and my wife likes to take the dogs out at night on uh, a pad that's not anywhere near outside of the gully because of our friendly wolf back down there, coyotes. Uh, that's their neighborhood, their territory. We just, that's what that deck is really for. It's very small. Just in case you guys are wondering, I know sometimes that's a sensitive, issue for some. Um, the grading. I know that's a touchy subject and intentionally my architects and I work to minimize that all the way down to 855 cubic yards. I'm sure you guys hear huge numbers here. That's not this. Um, that's only, that's non-exempt grading in total. Again, this was all done intentionally because it's not about disruption. It's not. Um, mechanical space. I personally have a pet peeve when you see somebody's roof and you got a bunch of condensers and things on top of it, it drives me crazy. I think it's a huge eyesore. So I spent more time, more money with engineers to put everything down below ground. And yes, we are well within the code and underneath that six foot 
Um, but that's why we did that. Uh, as for landscaping, um, only using drought tolerant plants, I think we all know water's not gonna get any cheaper anytime soon. Uh, the current home I'm in is absolutely all drought tolerant um, and drip lines, that's it, no aeration. I, anyway, that's, that's just my personal choice. Uh, there are a few palm trees. Those palm trees have been limbed up, they're pineappled. Uh, I've seen personally through the fires what happens when a spark ignites something that is not maintained and I never wanna see that happen again. It's the scariest thing I've ever seen during a fire in a windstorm. So I personally, after all my training with um, the team, everything that we've done after Woosley with LA County Fire, um, I know how to mitigate a property uh, better than most people. And um, our fire chief <clears throat> says himself, uh, you know, Drew Smith, who we work with, says 90% of protecting a home is hardening and mitigation. And I completely agree that with everything that I've learned. And that's why I've designed and built this house, want to build this house the way uh, to really be absolutely ironclad against any future fires. So, um, of course, our plans are also approved by the fire department. That goes without saying. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's really pretty much it. I worked really hard with my team to make this something that did not stand out in the neighborhood. I, I have a personal feeling about that as well with bigger is better is not the motto. And um, I would like to keep it tight, condensed, private and respectful. And that's really what we tried to accomplish. So um, that's about it. All right, thank you. You've thank got, you all for your time. You've got five and a half minutes remaining to just in case between the two of you if need be. Just in case. Um, are, are, any hands raised? No, there's no raised hands. Okay. I believe you have one card. I do have a card. But and they would like that statement read, perhaps? Yes, this, this is, um, and, and this is, um, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll have to advise me on, on uh, the import of this, but um, Eric Widmer, who I will say his name because it's a public request, of Peak Surveys, wants in the record a formal request that any reference to any service or product provided by peak surveys be removed from all plans and or submittals and reports provided by all consultants. So uh, on the face of it, it sounds like uh, peak surveys is disavowing something here. I don't know, but I just did a quick um, in, in non comprehensive, but tried to do a survey through the PDF of the thing and didn't find any references. So maybe we should have, Stephanie, do you, do you want to explain what, what, are we, what are we concerned about here or, or what's the concern? Yeah. Um, thank you for your question, Chair Hill. Um, so I'd just like to say that um, Eric Widmer of Peak Surveys was the previous surveyor and engineer that was on this project. And he, he was terminated by the owner in 2022. And he was replaced by a new surveyor and a new engineer. He was replaced with Land and Air, Mark Sandstrom, and Trisha Coffey at Asher Engineering. The new surveyors and engineers prepared all of the new work and all of the plans that are before you and have been the base for all of the work that had been done. I cannot necessarily speak to the concerns related to perhaps billing or other issues that may have transpired. My understanding is that he was paid in full. So this is not necessarily the forum to have this discussion as to a falling out between the relationship of a surveyor and engineer and an owner. But I'd like to just reiterate that all of the work and the plans and reports before you were prepared by Mark Sandstrom of Land and Air who, and Trisha Coffey of Asher Engineering who for the last year, 2023, all of my discussions have been with them and all of the plans I have been submitting were prepared by them. Thank you. Okay, so from our perspective and from the city's perspective, um, peak survey is, is simply not in the picture. That's correct. Okay, thank you. All right, um, so we have no other speakers then.
Let's close the public hearing portion of this and bring it back up to the table. Who would like to start? As Mr. Miller stated, it looks like a very nice project. I can see that he put a lot of effort into trying to work within the structure of the lot that he has and within the environment. I commend him for it. I'd like to recommend staff's approval. Do we have a second for discussion? I'll second for discussion. Okay. We have a motion on the table. Um, I, I would just like to just to clarify, uh, and this is, I guess, for Tyler, why is this a, listed as a resubmittal? Does that have any relevance to anything? What do you mean by that? I'm sorry. Um, somewhere near the top of the application, it, it was specified as a resubmittal. Well, I'm not. So, if I knew the reference, I could try to find it. Um, okay, if it's, if it's not jumping out as something that, you know, it's like, oh, there's a big story here, then maybe it's not anything we need to care about. Um, I, I would just like to comment, yes, rooftop decks, thank you. There's, uh, they're, not, they're not all created equally. And the ones that we don't like or that I don't in particular like are the ones that are the big party decks with the neighbors and the noise and, you know, you have a small little thing that's, that's a really different kind of situation. So just for the public's interest, that, um, that's why, in my view, these seem fine. Um, it's a question for Dennis, because you, you would know about this. How, how thick of the concrete would you use for a rat barrier as a foundation for a crawl space? Rat slab. Four inches. Four inch slab. Four inch yeah. slab, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So that, that gets me to my, my, my big question here, which is for staff. We've talked in the, in the past, and I don't, if, if I got a clear answer ever, I don't remember. So, you know, bear with me. Maybe I'm missing some brain cells or something. But the, the area under the crawl space up to the six foot high is, is improved, the mechanical space. While it's not square footage for the two thirds rule, for example, it's not habitable area. It is nonetheless development area as defined by it being development. And we have in the past, just the extreme example, we have said a six foot high cinder block wall counts as development. For, for the area of the development. So in this case, it becomes significant because if you count it as by a basement, uh, what page am I looking at? What page of the plans are you referencing for the rat slot? Um, Mechanical. Let's see. Let's see, I can, I can, I can maybe multi-process here and look at my, uh, I flagged some pages on my PDF. Um, well, I don't see that I flagged that specific page. Oh yeah, wait, hang on. All right, so if you look at, for, for example, I don't know if this is the best example or not, but A1.50, there's a, a, a large, basically a, a six foot high basement area on the west, the west wing of the whole structure. And so it's significant in this case because if you measured it by the uh, half measure basement square footage rule, we would be over the total TDSF on this site. Um, so I, I, I just don't know how to parse it. Like if, if, if we're saying that a cinder block wall would count as development, and if you had, for example, a shed, separate structure, that was finished in the same way that this six foot basement area is with concrete floor and so forth. We would call that development area, but somehow we're not calling it when it's under the house, even if it's finished, we're not calling it development area. And I, I've, I've never found the code section or, or heard a good answer on that. So I'd, for the record, maybe I can get an ex explanation that sits okay with me here. Uh, my explanation and, uh, and we'll, as I mentioned the last time the same question was posed to me mm -hmm. was that a, this is a policy 
from what I can find and looking in the history of it. And it is, uh, the as I mentioned last time, the planning director had to figure out at what point does it become habitable. Discuss. And in our, uh, our LCP and also in our municipal code, when you look at uh, what is considered floor area, it talks about areas that are higher than six feet um, in space from the floor to ceiling. And then that seems to align with the building code for what is habitable. Habitable spaces have to be in excess of six feet. And so it's my understanding that that is where this came from. And of course, I, you know, if the commission does not agree with that, of course, they are more than welcome to uh, impose a condition or deny or perhaps propose, uh, see if the applicant could do something to alter the space. But our policy has been to honor these spaces that don't meet the building code's definition of a habitable space because of height and access reasons as crawl spaces, mechanical spaces. Um, we've, you know, there's a range of arguments. Folks need space to run uh, HVAC equipment because of the moisture here. Hardwood floor, when you do slab on grade, does not always work because that ends up uh, as a conduit of moisture into the hardwood floor. Just look at my TV room and that'll tell you that. Um, so that's that. why yeah. you, you need a, 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 a ventilated space. And so we, as a department, look to see what, where could that line be drawn. And uh, from what I could tell the previous directors, they came up with six feet based on the floor floor area section of our code. Okay, so to be clear, you're talking about habitable, you're referencing that a couple times, and, and the LIP, let me read it, it's not long, the LIP definition of total development square footage. This is what it says. The calculation of the interior space of the primary and accessory structures, including interior and exterior walls, Accessory structures shall include, but are not limited to, guest houses, garages, barns, sheds, gazebos, cabanas, decks, terraces, oh, uh, cabanas, period. Decks, terraces, and balconies shall not be included in total square footage calculations when they are part of a primary, primary or accessory structure and are open on all sides. So it's the calculation of the interior space of the structure. And I don't, it, it's a finished structure, so I, you know, what, what are we supposed to do here? Except we're, we're saying we're going to just kind of skip past the code just because we kind of always do it that way. It just, it's, it's a slippery slope to me, you know, because then, then the next rule that comes along, we say, well, you know, we've bent this enough times, we'll just bend it again. There, there's a lot of houses in town that are just like this. So they have a six foot basement area that's either for equipment or storage or whatever, but they can't. It, you can't stand up in it, so but I'm not sure what you're after here. I'm, I'm after, it's, it's developed area. If you wanted storage space, you'd have to go spend, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month at a U-Store-It unit to get that same thing. I don't know. It's, 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 or a few thousand or more and, you know, add your square footage. But it's not habitable. Yeah. You're not living in it. You can't live in it because you can't stand in it. The, the definition isn't about living in it, though. Drew. Let's say probably the applicant is doing this also to minimize grading and also in regards to geo work in regards to, uh, by doing this, there's less over excavation and recompaction involved in the project, which is, I have no problems with. There'd be more excavation, yeah. No, you, you're going to have to. What, he's, what Drew's saying is that you would have to. In order to build the structure on top, you'd have to excavate and then recompact. Yeah. And he's saying that when you're digging down, you're digging down and the dirt's usually harder, so you have less compaction to do. Is that what's... Okay, but now we're getting pretty far afield yeah, exactly. from the exactly. actual definition. It, it, this is, happens all the time. Yeah. Um, so, uh, okay. I was going to answer your, your yeah. rat slab crawl space. Yeah. Uh, sort of, you know, having spent a lot of time on the some houses with rat slabs. For those of you out there looking to build, I think it's a very wise idea to build a rat slab in Malibu um, if you're building a raised foundation. Uh, some of them that I have worked in are that tall. 
it's really nice when you're walking in a mechanical area and you can almost stand up. Um, as opposed I'm to not crawling under using your back. I think it's a great no, idea. I, I understand I'm what you're saying. I think, I think that the, the other challenge that, you know, you're faced with on this project is that it's a relatively large house and structure for the size of the lot. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's within the threshold that's allowed, but if you were to go and calculate this in there, you wouldn't do that. But you also have to remember that the way that our codes are written, somebody is allowed to do this. Like, I, I see that the way that it's been interpreted to this date is that that is allowed. Now, if the owner wants to spend, the, you know, that's a lot of money to build a six foot crawl space versus having a crawl space that's two feet or 18 inches or whatever it is that's required, maybe a little more than that sometimes. So I just think it's a smart design feature, but. Yeah, I'm with I, I you. I agree with you. I just, I just don't know I, I, how to how to reconcile that with what yeah, the code I mean, I think says. that the we need to make a decision based on the plans that are in front of us. The plans that are in front of us say that it's mechanical space, it's less height than what we consider as habitable space, and it's calculated as such. All right. Let, let me move to the, the, the other question, which is simply that we're here on the point are in a high. Uh, archaeological interest zone and when when we're in a place like this not everywhere but when we're in a place like this we say we put in a condition that says we would like to have a professional monitor observing all of the excavation as opposed to just the um, if we happen to notice something when we're digging we'll call somebody but to actually have somebody there would you guys have appetite to do you feel like this is this is significant enough of a place on the point to to put that in? So, I'm not a historian, although maybe a little bit of a Malibu history buff. To my knowledge, a lot of the the stuff that was found on Point Doom is elsewhere and not in this area, but that doesn't say that it doesn't exist. Um, my question was going to be maybe of Richard: Can you shed any light on other? any other projects on Point Doom that have been required to do this. I do know that at times when they've dug in Paradise Cove, they've found remains and it is of great concern. This is an area of Point Doom that is not Paradise Cove, but it's relatively close. Well, we've done Paradise, things around Walnut Canyon, things around um, closer to the point on the top, right? Correct. Closer to Big Doom. I was going to say more in that area or um, Paradise Cove, but and and down the other has, side too. West. So has that been a condition of any recently approved projects on Point Doom that had a substantial basement or digging like this garage underneath? The the ones that come to mind are ones where the archaeologist has stated there is a potential. Yes. So whenever the archaeologist has stated that there is a potential, uh, based on either. A report stating there's something on site or something in the neighborhood in the relative same vicinity we have done that so it's I don't have the exact numbers in front of me uh, but yes in the point doom area we've done it and we've recommended it based on those reports do we have any report that would recommend it for this or is that just saying in point doom in general Oh, we got, um, we did get an archaeology report as required by the code. Um, it turned up that no cultural resources were found on the site and therefore uh, no further recommendations are required. Okay. So the, I don't see the appetite for it here. Okay. Well, I just, I, I think that. I, I don't mean to sell it. No, 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 just, no, no. I'm just saying, like, I feel like there's a house that was already built there, right? That house is going to get demoed. Um, I've known Docs for a while. He's a pretty smart dude. I think that he would take the high road on this if he were to uncover something like that as anybody that he hired would. So I'm comfortable with that, and I don't think that we need to put it as a condition. All right. So they're doing a lot of digging there. All right. Um, I think I've covered my concerns here. Do we have other thoughts, questions? All right, I, I, I'm going to have to say it just on the basis of principle. I, I see three yes votes here. I'm going to have to say no just because I, I'm reading the code and that's what I read. And, you know. Roll call, please. Commissioner Smith? 
Yes. Commissioner Peek? Yes. Commissioner Leonard? Yes. Chair Hill? No. Motion carries. Nonetheless, good luck, guys. Thanks. Um, all right. Do we, we probably want to take a break at this point now? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Eight fourteen is eight twenty too soon. Too soon. Eight twenty two. Eight twenty two and a half. It is.
We've got everybody up here. And uh, let's see, make sure we've got our notes here in order. That was 5C you just did? That was 5C we did, yes. So we're back to 5B. Um, I don't see a planner yet. Maybe I'll start reading it. The planner for this is a consultant, and so he will be available via Zoom to give his presentation. Oh. I'm here, Richard. I thought this was going to be Adrian. No, uh, no it's Joseph Smith. Oh, so former okay. planner turned consultant. Okay. And yeah. there he is. All right. We have a couple uh, speaker slips. So I, I will uh, read this. It's a long one. Opening the hearing on... Uh, 5B, Lachusa Beach Public Access Improvements Project, Coastal Development Permit Number 07-087, Negative Declaration Number 19-001, and Initial Study Number 19-001, Conditional Use Permit Number 21-010, Variance Numbers 21-022, 21-023, and 23-029, and signed permit number 19-004, an application for public asset, can't say that word access, access improvements at Lachusa Beach to improve accessibility consistent with the Americans with Disabilities Act, including installation of a new ADA accessible single stall restroom, on-site wastewater treatment system, gate access improvements, ADA van parking space and access aisle, and reconstruction of existing view platforms and staircases, including a conditional use permit for an OWTS to be located on separate properties, variances for locating improvements on a steep slope, for a reduction in the bluff top setback, and for retaining wall heights in excess of six feet, and a signed permit for the installation of informational signs. So, uh, Joseph Smith, welcome. Um, you have a staff report for us. Yeah, and good evening, Chair Hill, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, so this is a continuation hearing that you last heard at your October 2nd, 2023 meeting where it was continued date uncertain to allow time for responses to inquiries made by the Planning Commission. Since it's been a few months, I'll be providing an overview of the project once again. Um, I will be showing uh, generally some of the slides you saw earlier. I will try to keep them abbreviated just for the sake of time. Um, but in the meantime, uh, this, as you mentioned, this is a project for the construction and installation of those public access improvements at Lachusa Beach to improve accessibility consistent with ADA. The applicant is uh, MRCA in cooperation with the Malibu and Sentinel Homeowners Association and three private property owners. Quickly touching on history, it was originally submitted in 2007, delayed for several years due to a lawsuit between MRCA and the Homeowners Association over access rights. And a settlement agreement was reached in 2018, which included a beach management plan included as attachment I in your report. That, that uh, management plan outlines rules of use for the access improvements, uh, details management, maintenance, and responsibilities for repair and other related items. And this is a condition of approval as part of this item. Uh, lastly, the project does include an initial study and negative declaration that was prepared by MRCA, who is acting as lead agency under CEQA, and that was adopted in 2019. The city is a responsible agency under CEQA for this project, and the Planning Commission must determine whether the proposed project is consistent with that final negative declaration prior to acting upon the project. Next slide. Again, just as an overview, this is the overall project area. It includes four uh, subcomponents, one, two, three, and four. And uh, we'll be looking at those again in detail here. Next slide. This slide shows the proposed improvements of each of those four areas broken down by uh, different projects for improvements. And I'll combine this represents the Lachusa Beach uh, CDP. Project area one. It includes existing pedestrian and vehicular gates of that West Sea Level Drive uh, just off of Broad Beach Road. Improvements here would include adding an ADA key punch pad at the vehicular gate and replacing signage. Area two, located at the beach terminus of West Sea Level Drive. Improvements there include expanding the fire department turnaround, adding an ADA accessible van parking space and access aisle, and replacing a pedestrian gate, viewing platform, beach staircase, and signage. 
Area three extends from the existing pedestrian gate of Bunny Lane down to the beach. Improvements in this area include replacing the gate with a decorative gate, improving the pathway, adding a bike rack, replacing the viewing platform and beach staircase, adding an accessible single stall beach restroom and on-site wastewater treatment system, and replacing signage. In addition, the existing fire department turnaround at the terminus of East Sea Level Drive would be improved and a new accessible van parking space provided with a parking with an aisle, access aisle. The leach fields for the on-site wastewater treatment system would also be located in this area. And last is project area four, located at the pedestrian and vehicular gate at Broad Beach Road and East Sea Level Drive. Improvements in this area include adding a key punch pad for ADA vehicles and replacing signage. Next slide. Uh, as you uh, read very well, Chair, there are several entitlements connected to this one. Ultimately, the Coastal Permit 07087, a conditional use permit, uh, and three variances, and a sign permit, which you noted. Next slide, please. Uh, just as a refresher, the different, um, different images of the project area representing the overall project site. The slide on the left shows the pedestrian and vehicular gate at West Sea Level Drive. The slide in the middle shows a portion of the pedestrian pathway leading from Broad Beach Road at Bunny Lane down to the beach. And the slide at the right shows the restroom story poles that were installed last year. Next slide. Uh, we'll just uh, quickly cover through these. I've already read about Project Area 1. This is noted in your staff report. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, project Area 2, this is a close-up of project, project Area 2 improvements, again, showing that expanded fire turnaround, ADA parking space, viewing platform, and beach staircase. Next slide. This slide here shows the replacement stairs that would be proposed down to the beach and a replacement retaining wall that does exceed the LCP's maximum retaining wall height, uh, hence the need for the variance request. The current retaining wall is approximately seven foot three inches in height and proposed reconstructed staircase requires lowering the landing by approximately five feet. As such, the proposed reconstructed retaining wall will extend downward in an approximate 11 foot eight inch plus or minus uh, tall wall. Next slide, please. Project area three, again, a close up of the beach stairs, the proposed restroom, on site wastewater treatment system, and viewing platform as well. Next slide. The, uh, this is a, a rendering of the proposed new beach access gate for the Chusa Beach at that location. Next slide. And another uh, closer up image, again, showing the beach there is uh, where they terminate their, the restroom on site while use water treatment system and the viewing platform, as well as the ADA parking space, turnaround and leach field components. Next slide. And lastly, uh, area four, which includes the key punch pad and replacement, replacement signage. Next slide. I put the slide in here just to, um, you know, generally summarize the timeline with this project. Uh, back in 2002, as you're aware, uh, property was acquired by MRCA and an application was submitted in July 2007. Uh, throughout this process, there's uh, been eight years of litigation covering the 2010 to 2018, and then MRCA board authorizes the settlement agreement with the Homeowners Association. Uh, CEQA process covered 2018 to 2019, again, led by MRCA as lead agency. The city did review this project under its ERB in February 2019. Uh, we've had uh, studies submitted along the way, updated projects and story polls were installed last year. We went to the Planning Commission June 2023 and there was a request for continuance to August of last year. That hearing was canceled and you heard this item at your October 2023 hearing and here we are tonight uh, for, the, for the additional hearing. Next slide. These are summarized uh, in uh, generally the bulk of the staff report. Back in October, the Planning Commission requested clarification on 23 items. Uh, those are uh, those titles are summarized here. These are uh, provided verbatim in the staff report with what the Planning Commission requested. And there is a summarized response, uh, both from MRCA and city staff to address each of these. And there are several attachments that were provided with the staff report that also are related to these items. 
I'm not planning to go through each of these in detail. That information is in the staff report for the sake of time. But of course, we're here for any questions that you may have. Uh, last couple slides I wanted just to share. Uh, next slide, please. It's just um, some correspondence that's been received after the Planning Commission report was posted. We've received uh, seven items of correspondence. Um, their names are listed here and just a summary of, of what was noted in those comments. Uh, next slide. And then the last two coming from MRCA uh, responding to a residence email and also providing some additional letters of support for this project. Uh, we also did circulate additional correspondence that was not attached to the staff report, but was part of your prior hearing in October. And so all that information is, is out there and for uh, provided to you for your record. I did include at the end of this presentation um, some images that were provided. And so we can just click through these. Uh, these were, came in with that more recent correspondence, this one from GD Zarek in February 2024, uh, sharing images of, of the access way and the restroom, proposed restroom location. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is by Doug Cohen. He provided this image as part of his correspondence. Next slide. Another image from Doug Cohen. Uh, next slide. Um, these two images uh, were provided by uh, the chair just for reference for tonight's hearing. This one's from February 2024. And a last image. Next slide is a locate of uh, uh, of the the proposed location for the on site. Uh, sorry, the uh, restroom facility. Last slide, please. So just uh, with the presentation, staff recommends that the Planning Commission determine the proposed project is consistent with the initial study negative declaration and then approve the project as conditioned. Um, I'm here for any questions along with Director Malika and I give it back to you, Chair. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, Joseph. Um, before we hear from the applicant and the public, let's have some disclosures, please. Skyler. Um, I met with some of the folks from Mahoa, uh, I think it was a week ago, week and a half ago. Um, and I didn't learn anything of that that's not in the uh, the staff report. They just expressed, you know, that they would like to see, um, they have a comfortable agreement in place and they'd like to see it move forward. Dennis? Yeah, uh, same, same as uh, Skyler. Uh, the only thing I did was I asked, um, uh, Director Malika about the Resnick property. Drew? I also have the same disclosures as Skyler. Uh, John? Uh, <coughs> I've, I've been there many times on houses and um, houses on EC Level Lane. And I did talk to, I got a call from a person named Doug, and I wrote it all down, and then they lost a piece of paper, but uh, Doug was requesting, Doug Cohen, maybe, um, you guys was requesting to access during a fire. That's the only person I talked to. Skyler also? I also talked to Doug. I also talked to Jennifer Taylor, and I also talked to Donna Majuri. Okay. Um, and then I also did receive the photos and I did voice some concern to Mahoa over the bathroom with those photos of the ocean up where the bathroom was supposed to be. But that was it. Okay. And I, I too, with Doug. Okay. That's what we all did. Well, I'll, I'll say Doug too. I talked to him on the phone. I, I have a number of disclosures here too. First, I, I do have some critical thoughts, and so I just wanted to be clear from the outset. I, I think that um, more than many people in town, I appreciate some of the things that Joe Edmiston and Paul Edelman have done uh, over the years. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there that i um, trying to be as objective as possible. Um, since our last meeting, I engaged uh, attorney Ken Ehrlich, who I know has worked for, I don't know, did he work for Mahoa or he did some work on this at some point, right? Uh, but the people on Bunny Lane. Maybe Bunny Lane. He, 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 he was involved at, at some level. I had some separate work, about two hours of work he did on a small unrelated matter that's done, it's completed, it has nothing to do with anybody, but, but worth mentioning. Um, I saw a recent photo showing that the wave, rush, wave uprush in the storm was already touching the foot of the proposed restroom. I visited the site on Friday again. Uh, I went in June. In, um, I provided the, the two photographs that 
Joseph just showed you, I wanted to make specific reference to at some point here. And um, my impressions there, I was just struck again how much the restroom would block a major part of the best view from the east end when you're standing on the, 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 the walkway or the, or the street even. It really sort of sticks out past the, and, and really, I guess we'll get into this more when the time comes. But um, I heard from another restaurant uh, a resident saying about the toilet block or the, the restroom, why would the MRCA put something so ugly there blocking the view? Don't they like the beach too? Um, I, in June, I spent three hours on the beach, took 50 photos to refresh my own recollection. Uh, I, those are available if we need to look at anything on the site tonight. Staff has the photos of various areas. Um, otherwise, I don't need to refer to them necessarily. At the time, I spoke to about a dozen people, including a few residents, mostly visitors. Describe to them as objectively as possible, scientific detachment, everyone's reaction was that any further development would ruin the beach. Uh, people saying things like they come here to get away from civilization wouldn't want to be taking it over here too. So also I, I wanted to mention, I came across some information on a tax default on an adjacent property that may be relevant to this, and I can bring that up in a, in a question shortly. But um, without further ado, let's hear from the applicant. Are you, who, who do we have here on Zoom? Someone from, do we have Elena? Who do we have? Yeah, Elena Eager. Of? Of MRCA, right? Are you there, yeah. Elena? Can we hear you? I'm here. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. And so you, you have 15 minutes now. You can reserve from some portion of that for um, uh, rebuttal. rebuttal if you'd like. I'd let, I can mention to you that I do have three. Well, actually, before we get into that, let me ask the uh, Patrick and, and the body here. Two of these people are wanting are appear to be present here tonight, wanting to donate time to a representative of the Homeowners Association who would be appearing via Zoom. I don't think we've ever run into that situation where a live donor, is that, is, is that okay? That's fine. We, That's fine? We do have it in our typical, our rules of procedure and decorum. Uh, obviously you guys can change that for this evening, but it is in our rules of procedure and decorum that we do not allow time donation to virtual speakers. Do, um, specifically to speakers, or you can't donate or, when you are online? To or from. To or that from. Any persons to receive donated time or to give donations of time must be present in council chambers. It's it's what's stated in our rules of procedure in the court. Okay, well, this, this, let is, me, let me this, see if this is a representative of a formal organization uh, yeah. of the homeowners association. I think we need to hear from them. So. Well, Greg, I think we have a rule that we just adopted that if you're a formal organization, you, you get, get five, five minutes, minutes anyway. Exactly. So they, they would not be allowed to donate time, but they get five minutes anyway. Right. Okay. So, that, okay. So, Elena, knowing that, that the Homeowners Association will have time five minutes after you and one other person uh, be, other than them wants to speak, um, you can reserve your time accordingly. And welcome and go ahead, please. Thank you. Good evening, Chair, Commissioners, staff, and members of the public. I'm Elena Ager, and I'm MRCA Coastal Projects Council. Um, I have, it's short and sweet, I do want to reserve my time, but MRCA supports your staff's recommendation to approve this item. And we and our consultant team are here in attendance for your questions tonight. And a point of procedure, uh, last, on October 2nd, the last hearing, we also reserved our time for rebuttal but despite my hand being raised, I was not acknowledged. So I just want to make sure that the people that are on my team, the consultant team, will be recognized and allowed to speak if you have a question that it pertains to their area of expertise. And I also would like to have the opportunity at the end of um, this time to uh, provide a rebuttal or comments to your questions. All right, thank you. So we will keep a vigilant eye on the raised hands 
for ten <laughs> minutes. So you've got uh, basically fourteen minutes remaining. Um, let's go with the we have we have two. Is is Thomas Keen here? Pardon? Oh, I, I guess we're not doing these because the person gets the uh, you have to, you have five to minutes say, anyway. You Why don't you ask them if they want to speak in a knowing that they can't donate their time, right. ask them if they want to speak and then let them know that the representative will have five minutes. Good. Right. So representative of Mahoa Allen Abshez will get have five minutes. So you if you'd like to speak, you could speak now or uh, well, we I guess we'd put you after him. May I answer from here, Craig? Briefly or come to the microphone. Oh, you're gonna have All right. Yeah. I, if the, okay. Okay. And David Thomas is here also. Yes. Okay. Does he want to speak? And and might you want to speak also? Only if necessary. Only if necessary. Okay. So uh, on that note, um, well, we do have one live speaker in the room. Let's do that first because that's how we tend to do things around here. Kathleen Summers, come on down. Oh, further disclosure, Kathleen also called me as well this evening. I forgot. <laughs> and it was a very pleasant phone call, my dear. Oh, good. Thank you. Welcome, um, Kathleen. I just wanted to note that I have never received the documentation that uh, Mr. Malika uh, has been told that I have. So I can't address any other issues that might be in that documentation, but I really do greatly appreciate all of the commissioners and Mr. Malika for sharing with me that um, we now have from Elena, so also thank you, Elena, for saying so, that our deeded rights are going to be honored, so our access rights are not at issue, it, it appears, at this point. And Mr. Keene, who is the president of the Homeowners Association, has also asserted that this evening. So thank you all for that. It's really meaningful to us that we haven't lost that in our home. Um, I do want to support that I think that the toilet is in a horrible place. It's one of the most beautiful beaches in California. I'm going to go that far, not just Southern California. And to block it in half denies the public as well as anyone living there that view. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, do we have Alan Abshez on the Zoom? Uh, yes. Can we hear you? You can hear me. Yes, we can. You've got, five, you've got five minutes. Good evening, Chairman Hill, members of the commission. My name is Alan Apsis, and I'm here tonight on behalf of the Malibu and Snell Homeowners Association to respectfully request your approval of the CDP for the Lechuza Beach Access Improvement Project as proposed by the MRCA. <clears throat> this project will improve access to Lechuza Beach, add new amenities such as a public restroom, a viewing platform, and ADA parking and loading areas, while at the same time protecting the surrounding Mahoa residential community in which it's located through its installation of pedestrian gates that will be locked during the nighttime hours and its implementation of a beach management plan and other contractual agreements between Mahoa and the MRCA, as well as the conditions recommended by your planning staff. This goes back a very, very long way in October 2000, the Coastal Conservancy purchased the undeveloped beach lots in the, Mahoa, in the Mahoa community for public recreation with the idea of providing disabled access and with the idea of providing a public restroom at this location. In assigning its purchase to the MRCA, the Conservancy required the MRCA work with Mahoa to produce a mutually acceptable long-term public access management plan for the MRCA lots. And since that time, the MRCA and Mahoa with the assistance of the city, your planners, the Coastal Conservancy, and the Coast Commission have worked collaboratively to arrive at a mutually acceptable plan for the improvement of the MRCA lots, resolve their differences regarding the MRC access easements over the west and east sea level drive, find the best location for a restroom, and agree upon a beach management plan. The result of those efforts is the CDP application before you today. And by the way, I've been with this for 14 years, although it goes back much further, all the way to October 2000. Approval of the CDP will, will effectuate the settlement agreement between the MRCA and MAHOA and implement the beach management plan negotiated by the MRCA and MAHOA. And it's also going to be a, a condition of approval of your CDP, condition number 18 is recommended by staff. 
The west and east city level gates, which have long protected Mahoa's private streets in the Mahoa community, will be officially recognized and the lot I gate will be reinstalled. Public access to the project's ADA parking and loading spaces will be provided in mutually agreed locations along the east and west sea level drive, and as will pedestrian, daytime pedestrian access over west and east sea level drive, sea level drive, excuse me. The lot I pedestrian gate and the gate at west sea level viewing platform will also be reinstalled and locked during nighttime hours. The restroom has been placed in the best possible location conserving this, considering this, its service needs and the way it will be functioning. Pursuant to the beach management plan, the MRCA will conduct regular inspection of its property and facilities. And at least once daily, the MRCA will also clean out the restroom, remove trash from the MRCA lots and trash cans maintained by the MRCA. The beach management plan also requires that the MRCA conduct the foot patrol of the MRCA lots and inspect stairways, signs, locks, gates, viewing platforms, and parking spaces to ensure that they're in good condition and repair and free from debris, graffiti, decals, unauthorized signs, and similar defacements. Patrols will be increased during the peak season beginning Memorial Day week weekend through Labor Day. All this means <clears throat> is that there's a very good plan for managing this public space that has been carefully worked out with the assistance of your planners, the Coastal Conservancy, and the Coast Commission over time. Nothing can be quite perfect, but here we have a very good plan that's been before you that's been carefully considered from all angles. It's supported by the community in which it's located, and we urge you to support that plan tonight. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you, Alan. Um, do we have any hands raised on Zoom? There are three raised, uh, four raised hands. First is Doug. This will be Doug Cohen. Doug, can you, can you, can we hear you? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Chairman Hill and uh, Commissioners, thanks for the chance to speak. I first just want to say I did not receive the email from Ms. Egger that it was stated in the planner's presentation that was sent to me, so I don't know what it contains. Um, I'll go ahead and speak anyway. My family's house is on the land side of Broad Beach Road, across from the stairs and access way near Bunny Lane, referred to by the MRCA as Lot I and sometimes as Lot 1. For the decade we have lived here, there's been no gate at the entrance to these stairs, and we would like to see it remain this way. It's doing exactly what it should, which is to provide free and public access to the beach down below, which once seemed to be private and inaccessible. Simply put, it works. Further, it provides a fire evacuation path for residents on Broad Beach Road in case of a fast-moving wildfire <coughs> that helps PCH here. Of course, evacuation by road is always the first choice, but as we learned in the horrific fires in Maui, there are times when the beach and the ocean are the only way of escaping in this type of explosive wildfire that's more common today. The Coast Guard, as you probably remember, reported that in the Lahaina fire, 100 people were forced to use the ocean as a refuge to survive the flames. Consider the particular geography of this area. Broad Beach Road is sandwiched between PCH and the ocean, and at this location, it has PCH on one side and a steep coastal bluff on the other. This makes this stretch of Broad Beach Road vulnerable to being cut off by a wildfire that might flare up just across PCH and jump the highway here. So access down those stairs in such an emergency is essential. Otherwise, we face the possibility of being trapped between flames on one side and a lock gate on the other. The risk is real, it's foreseeable, and you have the chance now to eliminate this risk either by leaving that access point open as it has been for 10 years, or by ensuring 24 hour access for all nearby residents to any gate that's added, not just for the members of the homeowners association as is currently proposed. I know this has been a long negotiation between MRC, A and MEHOA, but I urge you as commissioners to please require this access as a condition of approval. Unlike the sea level gates, MRCA owns this access point, not the homeowners association. And there's no good reason why they can't ensure it remains safely accessible to all of us. Thank you. All right, thank you, Doug. Who's next? Sina Samimi. Sina Samimi, welcome. Can we hear you? Hi, I hope so. You're a little bit quiet, if you can speak up. That might be because I have a cold, uh -oh. uh, but uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we hope you're not too contagious. Uh, over the Zoom, you should be fine, I hope. Um, all right, so uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Planning Commission, uh, for hearing me tonight. I hope that you have received 
uh, both letters that have been submitted on behalf of my client, the Resnick Trust. And uh, we submitted one on October 2nd that the Planning Commission apparently did not all receive uh, before the last hearing. So we resubmitted it again as an exhibit to our shorter letter this time. And I just want to reiterate a couple of points, the most salient of which is the fact that if this project were to be approved, the vehicular access to lot 141, which is my client's lot, would be blocked. And this is something that has been acknowledged by the MRCA in our communications with them since the last hearing, between the last hearing and this hearing, and uh, had conference calls with Ms. Ager, and the, 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 we were kind of speaking past each other because the MRCA was claiming that no, access is going to be maintained. But what they were talking about was pedestrian access, not vehicular access. And for any development of Lot 41, Vehicular access is the relevant part of that because you need it for construction, you need it for access for a garage. And you know, regardless of what gets built there, whether it's a 1,000 square foot home or, or something more than that, it doesn't really matter. You still need vehicular access. And the risk that the city runs in approving this project would be uh, that you're, you're constituting a regulatory taking of Lot 141 by approving a project that you are that, that is known to have blocked access uh, to one of the lots. And this, this kind of relates to another point which we, we didn't put in our most recent letter, but uh, obviously the Planning Commission had asked several questions to be addressed prior to this hearing today. And uh, the, the responses to many of these questions are simply ad inadequate by the MRCA. And uh, I'll give you the example that that it relates to my client specifically, that's item number two, the Planning Commission had asked for a clear outline of the dispute regarding Lot 141 and the private ownership rights and all of that. That was not provided. Uh, those, the, the, the dispute is outlined in our letter, and our letter was not even attached to the Planning Commission uh, staff report. So uh, hopefully you have read that and you understand the dispute, and the dispute is about access. Uh, also, there are other issues that we raised in our letter about the inability of the uh, project to make, make the findings. Those are all outlined in our letters as well. Um, so hopefully you've had a chance to look at those. And uh, we do think that the project can be approved in, in the, the one, two, and four, but portion three should not be approved. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Samimi. Who, 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 we have some, one or two more? Uh, two more. Gabrielle Lessard. Gabrielle, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Lessard. I live in Los Angeles in the Cypress Park neighborhood, and I'm a volunteer with a nonprofit organization called Mujeres de la Tierra. One of the functions of the organization is to bring people from the community who don't realize that the beaches are public or otherwise have have not had or do not generally have the opportunity to visit the beach, to come out and spend the day um, learning about the beach. There are often instructions in how to navigate the waves, how to coast on a surfboard, etc. cetera. Um, one of the issues that we have had with providing access to community members to the beach is the lack of accessibility for people who have a disability or otherwise have limited mobility. And for that reason, I am here to speak in favor of the proposal to improve La Chusa Beach. And I will yield the rest of my time. Okay, thank you very much, Gabriela. And the last speaker? Um, there's actually two, or well, another person raised their hand after I called it. Okay, that's, that's fine. Okay, um, Roxanne de Aguilar. Roxanne, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank we can you, Commissioner. Go ahead. Great. Um, my name is Roxanne Aguilar. I am a program coordinator at Community Nature Connection, and we are a nonprofit based out of um, Northeast Los Angeles. Um, we actually connect community members across Los Angeles County to uh, beaches throughout Southern California. 
and the Chusa Beach. We have been so lucky to um, visit the Chusa Beach um, as a group. And we actually did um, an accessibility study in the summer of 2022, um, which was primarily um, focused on access, um, ADA access, but also um, access in general, like what like looking at what amenities are available and then what, um, and looking at how, and asking people how they feel when they're there. Um, so a lot of the community members that attended, actually all of the community members that attended are um, folks who come from uh, the inner city and they're folks who don't have a lot of transportation access to get to the site. Um, and some were also um, had ADA challenges. So um, we are, I'm actually here to share that the findings from our study actually from the community members sh uh, showed that the proposed plans that MRCA has would actually address a lot of those needs that the community members requested. Um, so I'm here to say that we're in full support of MRCA's proposed um, plans and design for the Chusa Beach. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. One more? The last hand is Rosa. Rosa. Yes, hi, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can, go ahead. Terrific, thank you very much uh, for your time. I'll make this very quickly. My name is Rosa, I work with Mujeres de la Tierra, and um, we take groups of community members, multi-generational community members to beaches in Malibu, uh, not just um, for them to feel comfortable to go in those communities, but also to show them how to access these hidden beaches. Um, we do a lot of uh, platicas or conversations with our community members before we take them to the beach. And, um, and many of them believe that all of the beaches in Malibu are private because they are so inaccessible. And when we talk about inaccessibility, we talk about gates that look like they're driveways to private homes, gates being painted the same color as private homes, signs put up saying that, um, that there is no parking. And even when we do make it to the beach, there is signs on people's homes saying that this is a private beach. Um, one of the, I know that's not what this conversation is about. This conversation is more about the ADA challenges. Um, and we do have ADA challenges since we do take multi-generation families. We're talking about abuelitas, abuelitos. We're talking about grandpa, grandmas going to the beach. Some of them for the very first time since they've uh, come to the United States. And, um, and we've had instances where some of these um, grandparents had to actually stay on the bus or just stay outside because they weren't able to come down to the beach. Um, they still enjoyed the scenery. They enjoyed the, you know, the just, they took everything else, but they did not enjoy the fact that they weren't able to, to go down to the beach to enjoy it with their family. So with that, I yield the rest of my time as well. And um, actually I do support, uh, Mujeres de la Tierra supports this um, um, ADA accessibility. Okay, thank you, Rosa. Um, Elena, do you want to reply to anything you've heard? And Elena, if I could just clarify, during public comment portion of the hearing is when you have a guaranteed opportunity to respond, and then once it returns to the commission for discussion, it is at the commission's discretion whether or not to throw back to you. And we will, we will likely have many questions and comments for you. Hmm? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Before we go back to Elena, you guys who filled out the slips and didn't have to, if you'd like to speak, you could come up to the podium. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick, for catching that. Manuela has more time left also. And when you, uh, please, please state your name for the record. My name's Thomas Keene. I'm uh, currently president of MIHOA. And thank you, Commissioner Hill, Chairman Hill, and the rest of the commission for giving us the chance. Mr. Abshed did, did a fine job sharing the elements of our beach management plan and how important this is. I want to raise one issue that came to me as we're talking about gate access. Um, and it's, it's, and to talk about our desire for you guys to move expediently to try to move to this project getting towards its summary conclusion. The irony of asking that when I represent the group that has battled this thing for 24 years is not lost on me. 
Um, so I'll, I'll offer that. Uh, we have significant issues that come not from sharing the beach. We, we actually have always shared the beach spaces down there. We never had our pedestrian gates closed other than for the hours of darkness. We sort of modeled ourselves after the gates that are on Broad Beach Road that LA County does the same thing for. As COVID landed and we were into the settlement phase of this and in the subsequent years since then, the utilization of the beach by public users and visitors has gone up exponentially from a few dozen on a weekend to thousands on the weekend. And it's a tight community. My family's one of 96 homeowners. Our concern is for safety. Our concern is for making sure that the rules about nighttime access are upheld. And the only way it's going to happen is with the reinstallation of the gate that used to be at Bunny Lane and used to be locked by Mihoa each night at dark, just like we did the gates at sea level drives east and west. So that part, and that's a key element, that's an agreement we have with MRCA that they would do that as one of the first parts of this process. And while I understand the fire issues, um, I think it's different. Um, and I think that, that the same way folks would love to have the key to Point Doom, People would love to have the key to that gate, but there are issues at night. We've had some significant um, crime. We've had home invasions. We've had auto theft. We've had burglaries. And we have at least a dozen members of that street who have paid for private security because they're very uncomfortable about what goes on with the unfettered access up and down through the nighttime hours. So the answer to that is to move through this. MRCA has a plan to secure that spot and we want to encourage you to get us to that point so that all the fine elements as as Absh has shared with you start to happen for everybody in the communities public and the homeowners thank you very much thank you would you would like to come speak to or yeah uh, okay no i just i second that okay all right all right thank you um with that then we're Closing the public hearing. Uh, we would be returning to Elena oh, for a rebuttal. That's what I thought, but I thought I was hearing closed. So, yeah, Elena, you, uh, you have an opportunity to rebut here. Chair and commissioners, I think that the record um, and in your staff report, our letters, our comments back to people who have contacted us, um, like um, the gentleman that spoke earlier, and I apologize, but Doug, I think is his first name. I think that we don't have more to respond to. So I, I will leave it at that. Okay, thank you. And with that, we will close the public hearing, bring it back up here. I, I have some thoughts about process here. There's a lot of moving pieces here. So what I think would be a good way to tackle this is to first Get out any burning technical questions, things that are that we just you feel like we have to get to first. Then to step through one by one as needed the couple dozen items that, that they did, the response items in order. And just if you have an issue on one of those, we'll hit it as we go. And then after that, I have a page or two of new thoughts that I may or may not need to get to depending on how we go on the on the response items and even beyond that we might decide that we need to look at the the actual resolution findings we'll see if we get there if that's uh, but i think a, a first step would be the immediate technical questions then stepping through the items yes skylar on process just in regards to process may i suggest i don't think that we have many issues with project area one i don't think we have many issues with project area two and I don't think that we have many issues with project area four. I think that most of our issues surround three. So I don't know if we have any issues on those other things. Maybe we should can go over them first and then move to specifically the other area of the project. Uh, well, let's think about that. I, I, maybe going through the order that if, if, if it is about the, the different area, then we just skip over it quickly. Right? Okay. Whatever. You, okay. Whatever questions. Right? Yeah. So. But just as a sort of a, a general thing, so what, what, what's like the burning question on the top for anybody right now? Yeah, Dennis. Well, I, I feel, and I said it when I was with those folks out in the audience, 
for whatever reason, Elena, that you guys feel that this isn't important enough for you to be here. And one of your first statements was you didn't get called on and your hand was up on the computer. Had you been here, you would have been noticed and you could have had your say. My feeling right now, after all this, that you guys should have sent somebody. And I'll never understand why you didn't. It's just not that important to you. Um, it's, it's unbelievable how you guys operate at times, and this is one of them. Okay. Um, other questions right off the top? I have technical questions. Technical questions, yeah. <clears throat> this is for Joseph uh, first. <clears throat> when we uh, approve some houses on West Sea level, uh, we were informed, as I believe, that West Sea level was not a legal width and that it had to be widened for the developments. And now I notice on part of the plans, it says it's 27 feet wide. At that time, it was 20, and that was only about a year ago, and I don't remember anybody coming to us. So can you give us the width of, the real width of the easement for West Sea Level and how, how that affects the development at the bottom as far as parking spaces and uh, access? Yeah, Mr. Mazza, I, I'm gonna need a minute to to identify the, the true width. As far as the road widening, uh, the prior year October uh, PC packet did include a description of that prior coastal permit, the 2014 coastal permit, which has since expired for the widening of okay. West Sea So my question there is yes. obvious. Uh, it's expired. It's not wide enough. So how does that affect this project? Yes, uh, and there was discussion by uh, the city's ERB to this point, there was the question, there was the recommendation from the ERB to process these two together. Uh, that discussion was included in that October staff report. Basically, it's a it's a question of the planning commission at that point as to how to sync these two or not sync these two. At this point, they're not synced. And that was, um, you know, that's just been the direction moving forward on this one. Okay, so um, as we... far as, go ahead. Oh, Oh, sorry, I just wanted to last to share. I was looking at the width. Um, it's about 12 feet. Okay. That's about as specific as I could be at this point. Okay, so to get, to have this project be legal for the development and access of West Sea Level, we need to put it in condition that it needs needs to be, the easement needs to be widened to 24 feet. Is that the uh, code, Richard? That's, I a believe, fire, that's a fire code, I believe. So the fire department has different widths depending, and 24 feet actually seems a, a bit wider than what they need. I would um, ask the applicants, um, Elena and also Alan, because I don't believe fire access is actually a requirement of this, because this is not, uh, this is a public access way. And I, I, I would confirm with them about the requirement of public access. The fire access, I'm sorry. Well, I'm not, not, not necessarily fire. We told the other houses, they got one house that was, I don't know if it's still on appeal or approved or whatever, that they could not build until it was widened. That was part of the condition. So fire department access is required for a single family structure, yes, but there is no single family structure that is part of this application. No, but there's, uh, there's, there's an access I think for, for <clears throat> handicap parking on a 12 foot road. Now, I doubt if that's ADA compliant or whatever, but I'm just wondering what do we do to fix it? Okay, could I ask, does, if you don't have the answer, could I ask Norm? Yes, you can ask Norm. Come on up and tell me, Norm. <clears throat> the access easement uh, on the uh, on the road is 20 feet. The fire department requirement is 20 feet. 
there's a turnaround between the last two houses uh, that are there. It is narrower than it's supposed to be, but it was approved by the Los Angeles County Fire Department when those two homes were built as the turnaround. Um, they can widen it past 20 feet if they want, but the, but the MRCA has the right to widen the road to a full 20 feet wide if it's necessary. Okay, because, uh, thank you, Norma. We were told at the hearing that it was not a 20-foot road uh, when we heard those houses. Okay. What? It may not be paved that way. Okay, no. all right. Yeah. Okay, all right. so, so Joseph, if, I put in a, if we put in a condition that said the, uh, the road has to be code <laughs> compliant uh, in width for public access, other than pedestrian, would that solve the problem? That was to Joseph. Are you still yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm up in the sky. Um, <coughs> I'll say that, I mean, I'll, I'll echo what, what Director Mollick has said, that the requirement is 20 feet for new houses, not for this type of project. At this point, I think if the Planning Commission makes findings to support that condition, then that's the Planning Commission's prerogative. Okay. Okay. Um, then uh, on C1 of your plans. This is still just a quick technical question. We're not getting into the item list yet. I'm asking technical questions. Okay. Uh, do all you right. want to go through each project on all the technical questions? Well, I want to go through the items, so if this is one of them. Well, I just want to determine. Okay. Uh, this is a quick question, I guess. Um, on page C1, it looks like there's a pedestrian ADA access to the actual beach that is labeled um, Grasscrete. And uh, is that, is that an actual physical feature of this project? Because I didn't see it otherwise. Is there a way for an ADA person to get to the sand? And is that, is that drawing the way they do it? It says fire truck turn around, and then right below that there's a L-shaped thing. The applicant does have her hand raised to respond okay. to these questions. <clears throat> yes, please. Yeah, you can answer that if Joseph doesn't know. Is she un 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 muted? Um, I'm unmuted, I believe, now. Okay. Again, for the record, Elena Ager. Um, I wanted to answer your first question and add something to that, which is in your packet on page four, um, your item three at the top says fire department review. And you'll see that on March 3rd, 2023, LA County Fire Department provided your city staff, your staff with a signed review sheet. It did not require, require fire department plan review because it is a public access improvement. So I think your director, um, Malika, um, was informing you correctly. But I just direct your attention to that. Okay, I'm, Elena, I'm sorry. That, that, that wasn't his question, right, John? Did, yeah, did, my did question. Did you get your answer to your question? Well, I'm still going to make the motion because it's, it's, not, it's not a legal. The fire department, if they don't review it, they didn't review it. And Okay, so this will be a condition you yeah, want to okay. put on when we come Okay, over so over then the, the, the question now is, is there... Is there an ADA access shown on C1 that is Grass Creek? It's and off I'm a sea level drive and it's next to next to uh, what's called biofilters. And there's an entrance right where it says fire truck turnaround. Um, it says proposed ADA access route. So is that Go, a part of this project, or is that something in the future, or what is it? The CDP, to my knowledge, um, 
is for the entire um, plan sheet that you have before you. So if it's on the plan sheet, which I think it is, um, then it is part of this, the uh, applicant, us, MRCA, and Mahala's um, request for permitting. The final surface of the plan uh, path of travel, I think that's what you're talking about, um, will be determined at plan check. That's a typical thing, surfaces um, and that degree of, um, of detail aren't quite what we're talking about. That is the path of travel is on your plan um, set and that the surface, again, the treatment of the surface, um, my understanding is that's determined at plan check. Okay, so uh, I guess I better ask Joseph this. That path ends up at what looks like a cliff. And so I don't understand where it goes uh, and how it could access a beach and what it is. I mean, you have a stairway over by the bathroom, obviously not ADA compliant for uh, wheelchairs. Um, but this looks like a ramp or something that goes to a cliff and it's part of the plans. Uh, does it exist or doesn't it? Can you take a wheelchair to the beach? Do you have to have a, do you have to have a beach wheelchair like they supposedly have at the pier? Um, uh, I just John, need some idea if, what if, this is. Hold on. If you look at C3, which is a zoomed in view of that, it doesn't appear that that is any slant of elevation. It looks like that's just flat surface that's grass creek that is around there. I, I don't know how they use grass creek for ADA access. I don't know how that is yeah, possible. This, yeah, you're right. C3 has says grass creek. Um, but it's an item on the project that I, I don't understand what it is. Can mm. anybody explain to me what it is? Is it a ramp or a level surface? And and what's it for? And and is it ADA? I can explain that. It, um, what you're looking at is the path of travel that goes from the ADA parking spot on East Sea Level Drive to the viewing platform. Oh, sorry. No, it doesn't. No, no, excuse me. Let me correct myself. On West Sea Level Drive, not East Sea Level Drive. We're, we're well, talking see, about East right now. I'm talking East, the end of East on sheet C3. So it goes, it goes from the parking space, the ADA parking space. Keep up, guys. John, I thought you were talking about West Sea Level Drive, not East Sea Level well, Drive. Well, so West Sea Level Drive ends at the, at the restroom. I know, but the sheet that you were referencing is and, C1, and, and C1 is West Sea Level Drive. Yeah. Right. That's why I'm trying to answer. It doesn't matter, really, at West Sea Level and East Sea Level. It the doesn't matter. I just want to know what it is. I mean, it, it appears <laughs> well, to I'm be. Well, I can't explain. Okay. The path of travel goes to the improvement. So the ADA requires that there is a path of travel for people who need that from the ADA parking spaces, whether it's West Sea Level or East Sea Level, to the improvement. On East Sea Level, it goes to the viewing platform and the bathroom. So those are where the path of travel ends at East Sea Level. On West Sea Level, the path of travel is to the another viewing platform at the top of the West Sea Level stairs. So that would be an ADA accessible viewing platform. So someone who has um, needs that path of travel would, would go from the parking space on West Sea Level to the viewing platform at West Sea Level. Okay, I got you. I got you. Thank okay. you. I'm, uh, in, in line with what your question is, though, like on C3, I'm not aware that you're allowed to use grasscrete for a ADA access. I mean, you can use it for, yeah, I just, I don't. It's, it's a minor detail, but I don't know how you would be able to use that. And I know that that's probably more of a visual thing for them there, but that would need to be clarified. Th th this is a response. <laughs> For, for Joseph. Yeah, Joseph, yeah. do you have an answer on that? Yeah, I had, yeah, I had my hand raised here. Um, 
I just want to go back to Commissioner Maza, your question. Can a wheelchair access the beach on East Sea Level Drive based on this design? The answer is no. Okay, so let's just. Okay, now can you explain that. why? It's it's the design, probably no, elevation. I, I know, I'm just saying. I mean, it's. Yeah, I mean, it would, um, Elena would be able maybe to answer the design question, but I just want to clarify your, your ask. And as far as the. The uh, leach field, oh, sorry, the grass creek surfacing. It is true that during plan check, ADA compliance is checked. If there is a surface that is is not in compliance with ADA, it can't be proposed. It may have something to do with the leach field design. Again, a technical question, maybe for MRCA's consultants. Okay, no, I, I have no problem anymore. I, I figured it out. Okay. Um, other than it, and that's a minor mod, I imagine, whether it's grass creek or cement. Um, Okay. I, and now this is maybe a dumb question, but it's my understanding, at least from my experience, um, ADA requires access to the beach. Now, uh, okay, this is one of the items in the list. Let's get to okay, that when we get okay. to it. Because uh, um, I think we'll, we'll be a little more organized that way. Now, another quick question to Joseph without having to go through everything uh, is, uh, in the pictures we saw, the whole side of the hill is covered with ice plant, uh, at least the MRCA portion of it. Um, is there a landscaping plan, and is this going to be fixed? Because ice plant at the beach and, and the beach don't mix. They cause landslides. Plus, it's non-native non and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, you'll eventually have a landslide if you have a ice plant on a steep slope. So, is there a landscaping plan at all in this? In this, uh... I do know that it's referenced on one area where they say that to plant some sunflowers or something three feet apart. But I think that's more up on the the path on the. Yeah, I'm just wondering about down by the beach. Uh, uh, you know, it's this thing is so thick. I you know I didn't, didn't find one, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't see one. I mean, the, okay. the only the only references on the East Sea Level Drive L three of four, the left side, where the vertical public access easement it is, it says where terrain and gaps in existing vegetation warrant infill with planting of bush oh, okay. sunflower, so, one so. gallon at spacing of three feet where applicable. Okay, so that's something that needs to be addressed. Um, yeah, and Commissioner Maza, if I may. Please. Just just also recognizing uh, back when the ERB looked at this, if you look at the third recommendation, this is again in the October staff report, page 16, the third recommendation talks about planting on the slope, just stating that that area, as you're mentioning, contains ornamental plant species dominated by ice plant. Installation of on-site wastewater treatment system would not remove any native plant species and no planting is proposed. So, um, so if we want anyway. to fix it, we have to put in a condition. Is that right? If, if again, if, yeah, if the planning commission has a, has a concern on this, then. Okay. Okay. You're making a note of that. And, uh, <coughs> I don't know if we need to wait until we go to the gate, but um, I was at a hearing a while ago, and I can't remember which one, where the MR, there was an MRCA lady, and this is addressed to the MRCA, there was a MRCA representative there saying that every single gate that the MRCA has has conditions on it uh, established by the Coastal Commission, um, and that you follow those conditions. Is, is that the case? As far as locking this gate, did the Coastal Commission way back when come in and say it should be open, it has to be closed, et cetera, et cetera? Or is this an agreement between you and the Homeowners Association to close the gate? Joseph? I don't have that information. Well, I, I, I was asking the MRCA. Uh, apparently, they have one person in charge of all the gates in Malibu, and each one of them has been studied and it's either open or closed or this hour or that hour, depending on what the original coastal resolution was. Uh, does that exist in this case or 
Was that was that ever considered? This is Elena from the MRCA again. Um, this these gates haven't been permitted. They're after the fact on east and west sea level. So what you what is part of the CDP application is after the fact permitting for those gates. So so it's up to us to set the conditions. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, I, uh, Drew. I have a question for Patrick. Uh, that's right. Um, one of the callers was an attorney for one of the property owners that is claiming that this project's gonna limit their access. Do you have any guidance for us <coughs> regards to that? <clears throat> yeah, so the, the, the correct. So lot 141, I would respectfully disagree with the caller that the approval or any potential approval by you tonight constitutes a regulatory taking. Um, the caller was making arguments and about vehicular access. Well, if you look at the lot right now, it has no vehicular access. Further, we do not typically get involved in these types of civil disputes, nor would I advise you to condition a current project on some future hypothetical project in a very, I don't want to say problematic, but I think it's safe to say Lot 41 would be challenging for any, for any development. And so if there is an access issue at that time that development is proposed, that is the time to address it. Um, and so my office is comfortable with what is before you all tonight. Um, and I hope that answers your question, Commissioner. I, I, think, I think what the concern is, they don't have it now, but they're saying that if, they, if we do this project as spec, it would preclude them developing the access. I don't... Uh, can you pull up, there's a slide, I think it was a picture from Doug that shows the bluff with the water. And maybe it has the story poles for the bathroom. Does that have to do with this? Yes. That has to do with this. Uh, uh, yeah, we're getting that. There you go. So, um, this is, is this west or east sea level? This is east. 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 Okay. <laughs> No, never mind. No, I was going to say that it's on the other side, so it doesn't matter. But I mean, just if if that's the right photo. So this is currently this is looking. Yeah, this is looking directly at that lot. Okay, so the lot that they're asserting here is developable. If that is properly cited, uh, the lot is entirely in the ocean. You know, it varies. The mapping of it shows it to have uh, the mean high tide line crossing somewhere like three quarters of the lot being above the line. Yeah, but the mean but, high tide line moves. Yeah. And there's another thing called sea level rise. Yeah. But, I, like, I don't think that, I just don't see how them doing this development doesn't, precludes them from accessing the beach from where there are the other vacant lots that somebody would use to construct and drive over. And that would be a civil arrangement that's worked out between them and another owner. So I don't I, I'm, I'm trying well, to read between the lines here and I think what they're suggesting that they would, you know, presumably have to put something on piles like any beach house and that they would access it by a vehicle from the end of this road. But if we put, allow this structure in front of that, that would block wherever that driveway entrance might be. The, the structure <coughs> that being the bathroom, the, the existing stairs are already there, so the stairs are going to basically extend a little bit further and get so, redone. Yeah, so it doesn't the bathroom change it doesn't as much from it. what it is yeah, now. That's, yeah. that's the point of yeah. what I'm making. The only thing is if you look on the, uh, I think it's C3, if you look on the close-up of, yeah, it's not three. no, it's not this one. C2. I thought there was one that said something about a wall. That's the wall on the stairway, probably. 
Not the wall of the stairwell. It's like at, the, in, at that corner of the apsis that we were just it, talking about. It shows on. Uh, it, it looks like this. It's on the lawyer ladder, I think. Oh, and on the elevation. It's it's like multiple elevation drawings, in a plan view. I mean, that, the Time. elevation drawings for me were confusing because I would yeah. have liked to see them with like the angle of the bathroom. Yeah. Like somehow we on the one I think. Like that one stairwell one is pretty good for West Sea Level Drive. Well, you know, we can't design a house, but I'd, I'd like to, if, if you don't mind while you're looking, I'd like to ask our attorney a question. Uh, okay, well, hang on. So, we're, what do I just, I don't you're understand. You're still on the Resnick? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Curb section grade to map. Like, I don't see how what they're trying to do blocks the parking. Or, I mean, blocks their access, is what I'm saying. Other than as long as they're able to drive over the leach field, what looks like it's a drivable surface because yeah. there's parking on it. And, I just and if they had to reorient some of the, the steps now, maybe the, the distinction might be the, I guess the timber only, steps The now. only thing that would block that is the railing where there's a guardrail from the six-inch curb going down, that guardrail that goes out where the ADA access is. And that would require some kind of accommodation at that point. At that point in time. And again, we're trying to make a decision now on something that hasn't even yeah. been proposed. Yeah, but this is yeah. a, this is a yeah. lot, and and those railings are on a different lot. Okay. Yeah. So we're they're saying essentially, and my question, to Patrick, is if you do not have a buildable lot, you do not have vehicular access, which means you cannot get a building permit. Aren't you violating the MAP Act? And if you violate the MAP Act, it's an automatic taking. And it's not even a question uh, because you've, you've put out a, I don't know if there's a certificate of compliance on this or not, but you cannot create a subdivision without access, period, in all circumstances. So how do you get around that? And so that, that question was pretty loaded, and so I'm trying to un unpack it. So are you saying that the original creation of this lot was somehow violative of the subdivision? No, I'm saying that maybe. I don't, I don't know what happened back in right. whenever, okay? But, and I don't know if there's a certificate of compliance on right. this. And, so, and, and, yeah. and if there is, that means somebody signed off on it in the city, and uh, it's a legal lot. So the question is, can we change a legal lot and make it illegal? And if so, then aren't we violating the MAP Act? And so, and so I, the, the issue before us all tonight is not on the legality, illegality, or what potential building potential this lot 141 has. The argument posited by their attorney is that they have vehicular access to their lot, and this they, excuse me, they have the right to vehicular access. It's clear that they do not have vehicular access as it's currently built today, that in that, that there was a stairwell approved or a staircase approved where this vehicular access allegedly is. Um, and so before you tonight is not the design of that lot, it's not where can you cite it, maybe they can get access from somewhere else. That is an entirely future us, future us issue, that if that lot were to ever to be developed, or an application for it, we would address its merits on there. If the owner of lot 141 believes that the current uh, project applicants before you are somehow <laughs> violating their easement rights, they have a civil case that they can effectuate and say, you cannot do this for X, Y, and Z reasons. Um, as Commissioner Peake um, highlighted by that picture that is that is shown, you know, it currently is seemingly three quarters somewhat underwater. So the, the, the idea that we need to modify this project or maintain some level of vehicular access is simply not, 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 not a position I agree with. Okay, even even though, me. even let me just finalize it, Craig, even though we're saying rebuild the stairs. I, mean, I could see it if the stairs were there. Now we're saying build some new ones. Uh, that doesn't change anything. 
We're, we're authorized. This will be a matter between you. them to sort out if yeah. and when the time comes. Correct. I, I was just going to say, I was just wanted to ask that question to make sure that we covered it for yep. everyone involved. And I think I got a, the answer that answers it and with, with Skyler's additional input. Yeah. I think we're done with that. Okay. So, Craig, I, I yeah. found the thing that I was looking for. Okay. So it's on L3 of 4. Um, there's right kind of John was talking about that path before there's a, a arrow with a line that says new vertical element and I don't know what the new vertical element is is that just like a six inch parking curb or what is that because I don't have like an elevation like standing on EC level looking down to see what's going to be built and I get concerned when people say vertical elements and I don't know what it is and maybe that's a question for uh, Elena. Hmm. It's right above a uh, comment that says four foot wide path, see note one. It says new vertical element on L3 of four. Where is it on that, sh on that sheet? Uh, bottom left. Yeah. Second. Like, oh, new vertical element, I see, yeah. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't know if it's a curb or if it's, because we were talking about the access to that lot, it's, and if it's, it's a vertical element, then it would impede access of some truck getting over there. It's like shoreline protection device for the leach field, I think, mm. which it shouldn't, shouldn't be. I, or maybe it is. I don't know. But Yeah. Well, get clarification on that. Uh, uh, Joseph, do you know what we're talking about? Do you, or if you don't, then we can ask Elena. Yeah, ask Elena. I'm I'm getting to it. I was I was there and I lost it. So give, just give me a sec. Okay, Elena, do you, do you understand where we're looking? No, I'm looking for it myself right now. Do Do you have already L three of four? I do. You do. Okay. So if you kind of zoom into the lower left quadrant, the biggest text down there says fire department turnaround, and then up above that. It says new vertical element. And it looks like the new vertical element points to two different areas, but I don't know if that's a railing or that's a curb or that's, I don't, I have no idea what it is. It probably, uh, and <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm looking at this and squinting because it's very difficult to see. So um, I okay. think it's probably a curb to protect the ADA path of travel. That's my um, mm. educated guess because EC level drive, um, one of the requirements of the ADA is that you have to protect the path of travel for somebody who's in a wheelchair, for example, um, to the improvement, as I was explaining earlier, from possible um, conflicts with vehicular traffic. Mm -hmm. um, oh, thank you. My, and part, yeah, uh, com you. Oh, sorry, Commissioner Pete. Just uh, what I was also trying to reference, if you go to C4, uh, I think you'll find your answer. It has a section cut, so section A north, which will give you the, the slice through that area. And it is a curve. Mm -hmm is what it's referencing as, as Elena mentioned. So it's it's associated with the path of travel. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, who, who's, Parker, who, who, who's controlling the, what appears on the public screen? You are, when in doubt, leave up whatever it is we might be talking about versus cutting back to the people because people might want to be looking at the maps or the photos yeah, or whatever. I should have said that, sorry. Right. It's okay now. We don't need it now, but but in just, that's it, that's our fault. We'll be more clear. In about general, that. the the drawings are better than our faces are pretty. So, if that made any sense, it's your fault, Parker. And, and I don't read our minds. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I want to ask a question, technical or preliminary question still. Um, and Joseph, you may know this. Um, Richard, you may know this. The, the there's a the property immediately above the same section we're talking about here uh, with the ice plant. The big parcel up there. 
went into tax default in 2021. And now when you look on the, uh, the new 2024 parcel map there, that property is no longer the uh, APN number that it had. It has a new APN number and it's broken up into blocks. Um, it looks like it defaulted to the, to the county. Um, so I, I wonder what the status of, of that is because it, it plays into my next questions about the location of the restroom and some other thoughts. But do, do we know what's happened to that parcel and is that potentially in play in terms of negotiating easements or... Uh, is this the big house? Yeah. Oh, that can't be. It's, it, uh, it was listed um, when you go to when you go look on the tax assessor website right next to the these lots and you look on that one it's that APN is no longer there and uh, it's now broken up into several smaller blocks um, so if you don't <laughs> you're not you don't have an immediate answer for me what, what I'm thinking about there is if I could Parker if I could see uh, either the photo one of the two photos I gave or the, actually the first photo in Joseph's presentation was very similar. The view of the story poles from looking from the east towards the west. Kind of like, yeah, that, that one, that's, that's good, that's fine. That picture is taken from the walkway, basically from the intersection of the the stairs that come down with the portion of walkway that goes parallel to the shore. And it's a little bit of a telephoto, so it's pushed in a little bit on that from that point. But that's right where it is. That to me, that point is the view of this beach. That's what you see when you approach and when you arrive. It's what, when you're coming down the end of the road or when you come down the stairs and you turn the corner and you, you're exposed to this nice big beach and the view. And the restroom is just right in the prime view of look, as we heard from one of the I, public. I was going to ask if they were going to put a window in it because I thought <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, straight through, right? That, actually, that, I mean, in the end, that might help. Um, just make it one big clear story around the top. Um, and so what, what I wonder now, the other photograph that I gave with, that has the trash bins in it, uh, looking down the steps from the, there you go. You see those brown trash bins kind of inland from the, the stairs. There's a whole zone there where the restroom, there's enough space where you could just tuck it back in, kind of up near where those bins are so that you'd come down the stairs and you'd go past it and around the corner and you would see the view all the way down. It's got a little pocket in there. There's a little pocket there and I, my 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 guess is that that was ruled out because some or some portion of that is the private property of this parcel that I'm talking about that suddenly defaulted, and given that you're uh, dealing with swapping easements at the west end to get the access turned around there, and you swap some easement with the landowner immediately adjacent there. there maybe there's a deal here where you just carve out a couple. It's really just a few square feet that you could tuck the restroom back up in there, sort of behind the, the OWTS portion of it and behind that walkway. I don't know that that would affect anybody's... I mean, I... I, I, don't, I don't know the... All the ins and outs of that. But yeah. I guess what for me is really hard just in terms of a practical sense here, you know, that... The state owns a lot of property in, in Malibu and has a lot of state parks. And the state just built a massive amount of stairs at Big Do. Would you think for one second that they would ever decide to put a bathroom into the freaking coastal bluff? <laughs> Never, ever. And I don't, I just think putting a bathroom into a coastal bluff is very, uh, it's a very poor idea. Well, they're asking for variances on that. I know. Yeah. And in granting those variances, I'm uncomfortable with it when we see uh, a photo of the ocean 
in the immediate vicinity of the bathroom and wastewater system. That's not to say that that doesn't happen on homes, but here we're literally carving into the coastal bluff to build a bathroom to a small public access way and really making a very complicated system. Um, I'm just not 100% comfortable with it. And I think that, you know, the ocean is rising and it's not the smartest zone. That's so it. So let me ask you, Commissioner Peak, would you approve that for a private homeowner? I mean, technically, we shouldn't do anything different for MRCA than we would a private homeowner, right? I, well, you, we, I, approved, we approved a coastal bluff for a motel. Okay, a 22-unit motel, I, I, right across from the pier. I guess what I don't see here is I see a very complicated project to put this bathroom in, in a zone that has a 25-year lifespan or expectancy. And I'm very concerned because another bathroom that was placed by the county in Nicholas Beach, which is further up the coast here, and let's not forget that El Matador is now voted one of the top five beaches in the United States, um, that it ended up falling into the ocean and sitting in disrepair, and part of it's still sitting in disrepair. So we have the, the caveat in here that if there's a problem with this, it has to be removed. We can get around that hurdle. But when you look back at the photo that's looking uh, to the west, <coughs> excuse me, and you're really blocking one of the most beautiful views of the coastline. I'm just not sold on it. So that's, right, that's just, where I'm at. I just I, comment I on that. Um, if you drive by Dan Blocker Beach, our $6 million two-header two bathroom now has renicans out front because apparently it doesn't perk anymore. Um, and that's just as close to the ocean as this Well, one. it's the same problem that they have at Zuma. You know, it's when the, the, those bathrooms, if they go in, either the, they can generate a lot of usage, you know, and I guess that's probably their argument and the reason of why they want to put a bathroom there. But, but uh, okay, so there's, I think there's some sensibility here. There's more to deal with in the specifics as we get to them. On the, still on the initial questions, though, the fire evacuation and the gate code stuff, I don't understand what the pushback is from MOHOA, I think it's coming from, to say, uh, and I don't know who I address here, but to say, can we recognize that a standard definition of a neighborhood is a 500 foot radius and that the people who live within that 500 foot on Bunny and Cottontail, that they should have access to the gate code too? Does that? No. No? no. It's a, that's a no. If you have, if you're in the Mahoa, you're in the Mahoa. If you get the 24 access, they give you the key fob, whatever they deal with it. If you're not in there, it's whatever the hours are that are posted, you have access to it. But, if the, event of a, but if the power goes out, power outage, yeah. it that should gate default better to open. unlock. Yeah, right? Are, are and that's a requirement. Sure? And other than that, you know, uh, I think that the um, Elena very clearly pointed out to a person that commented yeah what the evacuation routes are for the city of Malibu and running down that beach yeah, is not Scott, one of them. I, Scott, she, yeah, did but... mention, she did mention something else. There is no restriction that says that gate must be locked. It's up to us to decide it's a variance, okay? Correct. And so we have to consider public safety. Now, I live on a street. We had a fire. You were there. We had our whole street went down to the beach, okay, including people that didn't have a key because we have a Knox lock, and the fire department opened it, okay? So you have to have, in my opinion, you have to have some method for somebody to escape. Because I've been in the situation where I had nowhere to go but the beach. I'm sure you probably have at some point, and Lahaina certainly didn't. So I think we should consider <clears throat> some kind of I think the access during fire. The condition, what? I think there's something we could easily the, yeah. So the, the Knox bus is going to be required for the driving gate. It already is probably required. But you can have Knox locks on. I There's have no on my issue front with door that. Too. The, Again, the, the, main, the main one in question is, is the Bunny Lane gate. The Bunny Lane gate, as long as it defaults to unlock with the powers out, 
you know, if it's an emergency, I have a feeling you're going to figure out how to get out there. I'm not going to let that gate stop me from getting down to the beach. But you have to let's remember, once you're on the other side, you can open it and you're good. It's doesn't. It's not going to lock you in. Are you sure? It, yeah, because yeah, people no, go down there. They go. In. People go down there. We already yeah. we already went over that. Yeah, we know that. Dennis, you were good. I I just you got to make sure that gate opens if some if the power goes out. That's all. And that Elena, is that something that you'll do to make sure? If power goes out, the people, and God forbid, if there is a fire coming, the people will be able to get down there. Um, if the power goes out, that gate automatically opens. Just default. Let's 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 just move on. Put that in as oh, so I just Elena, a condition that we want to put the, in. Yeah, but I want to hear from the her. gate's probably a magnetic gate because they're using a to fob. mag lock. Okay. If you're using a fob, you have the option of having a battery backup. Yeah, With that option of battery backup, when you go off of utility power, you can default to unlock. Yeah. I was. So, we were told earlier it was a gate code, not a fob. Yeah, is it a gate code? Well, what, whatever it is, whatever it is, let's put a condition on our list that it that it needs to unlock when the power's out. When okay. the power's That's it. Right. What, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what technology. All right. Um, all right, let's maybe get to the, the, to the list. Let's see, I think we've talked about item well, one. Well, we have this already. picture here. Can I just ask one more thing? Sure. Okay. Are those railroad ties going to be replaced? Uh, that's, a, that, that's a point I of... I think it uh, says that they're removed on they're, here. They're, 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 they're going to redo the whole stairs there. Yeah, but are they going to come back with the railroad ties? I mean, do we have a condition on it? I think we, have, we don't allow that. No, they're, they're, they're... If they left them there, they'd stay there. I mean, I'm just wondering. No, they, they will all be gone. It's, it's incredibly unsafe the way it is right now. It's super slippery. Yeah, um, so, all right, so item one is about access rights. I think we've talked about this. It mentions Kathleen Summers, Patrick Crowley's property. Does anyone have, anybody have any comments or complaints or? Just on John's comment about the stairs, on their plans, they say the stairs will consist of concrete, steel, and wood. Yeah, we're going to get there. Okay. <laughs> we're going to get there. Um, item, item two, ownership use, clear outland, lot 41. I think we've talked about that a fair bit already, right? Um, item three, my, my comment on item three is the fire department review. Um, we're talking about this as an access, so it doesn't need fire review, but it's a, it's a structure. It's a public structure. It's a building that you walk into. Why does that not need a fire department review? That is something you would need to take up with the LA County Fire Department. They are in tasked with enforcing the fire code, and they are the experts in this field. And as pointed out by the applicant, this project was referred to them, and they determined it did not require their review. Um, and, and just to c clarify, we, the sheet that I see in the packet, the fire department re review sheet is entirely blank, but Elena said something in her thing that there was a March 23rd signed review sheet. Is that, did we get that? Did I just miss that? I would assume they reviewed it if they have a fire department turnaround. Why would you put one in if you, they didn't want one? Well, it's possible they looked at the west end and it didn't look at the east end or who knows. Um, so you're looking to see if, in fact, there is that there, there was the review sheet. I think the fire department turnaround is mandated for the existing homes that are there. Yeah, but I don't know if somebody from Mahoa knows the answer to that, but I would imagine that's the case. Okay, so item four: collision uh, information. Oh, chair, can I yeah. can I jump real quick before you move yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah, so attachment F in your packet, um, I have it as page 402. <laughs> <laughs> so it's way down there, but it is assigned, it is assigned uh, okay. fire review sheet that says it's not required from March 6, 2023. Okay, um, all right. And then item four, collision information, public works department request traffic reveal vehicle pedestrian collision study. Um, MRCA's response was that they addressed this in their uh, final negative deck. Um, this is kind of a fundamental problem. This points out a fundamental problem that becomes a theme on some of these later items for me, which is that 
Um, they say, because the project is not proposing a new use, but rather new improvements to an existing public use, uh, the proposed project will have a less than significant impact on traffic effects. Except the fundamental thing is, and this is for several other things, it's, this, it's the same thing. We don't need to study more because it, it is what it is. But the main pitch is we're going to completely change this and improve the access and add more and make it a different place. And you can't say both those things. So, for example, here, adding the restroom turns it into what was previously sort of a quasi-wilderness area where people come to hang out, commune with nature. The restroom suddenly makes it more urban. It's a more family-oriented experience because now you're going to bring your kids because you've got the restroom there. Uh, like what you can already get at Zuma right down the road. And that'll draw from a greater potential pool of visitors, which is their intent here. They want to get more people here. That sounds like more traffic, more parking issues that they're saying they the don't need to study. The testimony from the speakers tonight was that things like this in increase access. That, that That's why they're advocating for it. So right. There's no question with that. But the other side of it is they're saying we're not really changing anything, so we don't really need to study potential changes. Because so uh, there, there's a tension there that troubles me. Um, I don't. I think it's unrealistic to expect that the traffic interactions will remain exactly the same. More people parking, more kids, etc. Yeah. That does bring up a question about the ADA parking. Is it going to be basically anyone with a placard is going to pull down that driveway? And what happens if it's all filled up? How do they get in and out? Is it a reservation system? How is this going to work? Joseph, do you have a? I think there is a reservation system. <clears throat> Yeah, there, there's reference to a reservation system. Maybe Elena can speak to how that. Well, if there is a system, do, does that yeah. satisfy you? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. you can't get in the west, the EC level gate without some code to get through some kind of reservation. Okay, <clears throat> okay so I, I, you know, if we're looking at either, um, I should say, Patrick, we're coming up with so many potential conditions or caveats or whatever, if you, hopefully you're keeping track of things that this might be, depending on where we're heading, one of those things that we still don't have enough information on, on the traffic access thing. I, you know, if, if it's the only thing hanging out there, then, then maybe it's not the biggest deal, but it, it does seem significant to me. How many, how many points do we have so far? Uh, we're up to five now out of like 20 some. No, but where we're actually making. I have five motions okay. that I've written down. Oh, I, oh, what are we counting? They're all oh, minor. Yeah. yeah, little things, right? Um, okay, so item five, does anybody have a, any comment on that? That's the OWTS condition of approval. Um, well, let me ask a question on that. Well, hang on. This is, this is, they acknowledge they will accept a condition to remove the uh, OWTS, et cetera, within a reasonable time frame if damaged. Immediate removal. Immediate, Immediate removal, removal if damaged. And <clears throat> right? Yeah. yeah, my my mine's a bigger question. Yeah. We were talking about the view and the fact that this bathroom's, you know, not small and it's stuck in a cliff. Is it permissible to have Andy Gumps and make him pump them? Um, because they're a lot smaller, they're, you can see down there. You got some trash cans. You can put them there. And, I mean, I would put them there. Think, in that I case, the I would put them at the top. They're not ADA accessible, right? Well, I they assume they must can have they? them. I mean, if they I get, just, I, I, I don't think that. I mean, if look, if I lived in that house, I wouldn't want a permanent Andy Gump sitting right next to me. You, you know, might if you had a better view. <laughs> if I may, Chair, yeah, there is an issue with the local for. coastal program. You, we can't basically create um, waste storage tanks that require pumping. Yeah, that killed the beach access project. Elena may be familiar with that in 2012 uh, because they were required to put in a septic system, which then triggered the need for a seawall. And so that beach access uh, with the Coastal Conservancy never went through. So there is a requirement that wastewater be handled on site or through a CUP to move it to a, a, a neighboring property. 
Um, so we would not be able to permit basically a holding tank that has to be pumped every so often. So those, the ones at Dockweiler have to be removed at some point? Dockweiler. Dockweiler. Doc Doc uh, what's his name, the guy in, in Bonanza? Dan but, Blocker. Dan Blocker. <laughs> I, those I don't believe were permitted by the city with our LCP. Okay, um, let's m move ahead here. So item six, sea level road. I think we talked about this one too, the road widening. I think we've probably covered that, right? Item seven, um, what is, okay, what is? Are you gonna, are, are you guys gonna force them to 20 or are you gonna give them the minimum of 15? No, I'm going to make a motion to 20. You got to you got to do it anyway for those houses, and they got to turn around, etc. Okay, they're, they're, this is they're ADA. Exempt from, they're, they're exempt from fire department on this project. That has nothing to do with the widening of the road. Yeah, it is. That's a, that would be a condition for the fire department. Mike, no, it's a safety condition. John. The John's fire department making, doesn't design things, they improve things. Yeah, John's making the argument that it, in order to have safe access down to there that they need to have a wide road. Okay. And the other argument is unrelated because it was related to other houses, but it's... Yeah. There was yeah. some well, issues with some... You should call it a safety condition instead of a fire department condition then. Oh, no, no. Are, are you guys all vi visualizing that, the narrow bit there pretty well, right? Because I, I do have the photos if we need a reference, but okay. Um, project item seven, project lifespan, uh, 25 years, um, and whether MRCA has set aside funding to safely remove the development once they're uh, mandated. They talked and anticipated needs for a raised seawall, raised retaining wall, and a raised bathroom during initial development. Um, have they? Where, where does this the sea level rise policy guidance, this is page 101, I can quote it, it says, temporary structures, well, let me, let me say the second half of the sentence first so you know what it's talking about. These various things may identify, or in other words, they're allowed to identify a relatively short life such as 25 years or less. And the things that are allowed to have a short lifespan, as opposed to the like hundred-year house, are temporary structures, ancillary development, amenity structures, or movable or expendable construction. So that's an amenity structure. Now, m my problem with this is that little, if anything, of what is proposed is temporary, ancillary, movable, or expendable. If we're talking about large masses of concrete on those stairs. Being uh, incidentally one of the worst mm -hmm. greenhouse things, and, and I think we talked about this in the last hearing, but um, and, and all the steel plus all the embedded rebar in the concrete and. But the, why the, isn't it ancillary? Why? Well, because the whole project is access. So this is this well, is it's ancillary to the access. You have a place to go to the bathroom. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about the stairs now. Why oh, are you talking about the bathroom? I'm talking about the whole project. Okay. Right, it's it's no, nothing of what's proposed is is particularly temporary, and and so it seems like the MRC, by their own quote there about what you're allowed to do, is it's expressly negated the rationale for putting this in in the first place. Because it's just if the whole idea is you have to have a light footprint, we have a 25 year thing. I still don't understand why they couldn't do the stairs in a way that they've the state's just done at Doom. That's mostly basically timber with some concrete pile footers, but, and, and that's elegant and nice and it might, and I think their, their concern when I raised this, I forget if it's a different item here, they said, well, that needs maintenance, but what's a little bit of, you know, a coat of sealant every few years or something compared to, or not are, even. The stairs over there do not even have that. But what does that have to do with that code, Craig? At versus no code of any ceiling going on those stairs at point two. Versus the cost and expense and maintenance of demo, dem, demoing and removing all that concrete 25 years from now or whatever. Well, but why would they ever remove the stairs? Exactly. Because so, so it's permanent. So, so uh, 
what so if it's permanent, it needs to be, it, permanent needs to be a, a hundred years. They the don't stairs, have a hundred years. Why don't they have a hundred years? Because sea level rise. The, the sea level's not getting up those stairs. It's getting up to the bathroom. It's already hitting the bottom of the bathroom. I know the bathroom is a question, but the stairs they're going to be there two hundred years from now. Okay. I don't think these stairs will be there 200 well, years from now. Well, some but. version of a stairway will be there. <laughs> you might be scuba diving down to them 200 but, years from now. <laughs> but my question is, <clears throat> I can see the bathroom being ancillary, being 25 years, but you do need a bond to removal. And, and so your main should, concern is about getting things removed expediently and... Uh, well, they have to. Yeah. Okay, so you make them post a bond. Well, that's so you're saying that should be a condition in there. Rebecca has her arm up. Chair. Re Rebecca, yeah, sorry. I just wanted to let you know the applicant has had her hand raised for a considerable time oh, asking let, to let respond to these issues. Um, up to you. Yeah, let her talk. Elena, if, if you can be very brief. Well, no, it's, it's, it's up on it's us. To and Elena, it. you're you should be unmuted. I am unmuted, but um, I, I would direct um, the chair and the commissioners to the response we had, and I think you're misquoting it. Well, I'm, I'm not, but okay, go ahead. Then, then let me explain what the question was. The okay. question that on October 2nd was the rationale for why the bathroom was designed Lim at, for a limited 25 years. And the answer is the bathroom was designed for 25 years because it is an amenity. But the fuller answer is all of the improvements were designed for 100 year span. So our coastal engineer could speak to that, but that is also what we say in paragraph two of our answer that your staff has included in its response in your packet. Yeah. For example, and, and I'm gonna quote here, not for example, but I'm gonna quote, okay. MRCA staff acknowledged that the city's lo local coastal pro program in the LIP states, quote, development shall be set back a sufficient distance landward, um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> over the expected 100 year economic life of the structure. And we explained that we did a 100 year scenario. So that, that is the fuller answer to the question that you just raised. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so that was item seven, project lifespan. Um, item eight, wave up rush. Who wants, I had a note on that somewhere else. Um, it's on page six of 14. Page six of 14 in, in our uh, staff report. Um, they submitted the wave upper study. If anybody has an immediate comment on that, go ahead. I'm, I have a note here somewhere I'm gonna try to find. Sea level rise, all right, all right. Well then I will just jump in. Not seeing anything in my peripheral vision here. Um, the finished floor elevation is 20.44 feet. The wave uprush spec is 21.8, so 1.4 feet higher. So they're basically planning already that the wave uprush will wrap the base of the, the bathroom. Um, and, and I saw a picture somewhere, social media, already waves splashing up there in the storm a few weeks ago. Um, so this, I mean, this just feels to me like one of those, and people have talked about it already, about putting it in the coastal bluff, et cetera, and the setback. What was the elevation that you just said? Finished floor or the wave uprush? Finished floor. 20.44. But on their cross section, on East Sea Level Drive section restroom option A. What, what, where is, is that in the? Uh, it's the, it's like the fifth or sixth one of these. It's, a, it's this one. You're saying the elevation's 20. They're showing the elevation 
is 18.2 at the bottom. For the finished floor of a... Uh, yes. That's even worse. I know. Yeah. I, I, I'm that's, not... That's my point. I don't recall where I, where I got the 20-something from, but... Um, Nonetheless, it, it seems like this feels like one of those situations where can I, the, the, the so-called 100-year storm a happens question? once a year. Elena? Can you hear me? Elena? Yeah, I can you. hear you, but I have to, you have to be a little patient because I have to be unmuted by you. Okay, okay we can I'm hear you now, yes. So I'm here um, now. Is there a reason why the bathroom didn't get designed further into the bluff so that you don't see it? MRCA doesn't own further in on the bluff. So and that was something it, that that's chair, that's what the issue is. That that's right. I think it is currently owned by Valerie Bertinelli. But it and, couldn't go like beneath the stairs, like where you walked out and then walked around and went into it, and it's underneath the stairs. Why couldn't that happen? At the time that it was designed, it could not. And so it has to have a leach field because you heard. Well, um, the leach field is going to go down in the parking planning. area. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So your planning director explained that um, that constraint. Yeah, and but so the location was chosen to meet the um, opportunities, and and one of the constraints was it needs a leach field. Yeah, uh, Elena, just if I may. Uh, I don't know that we heard you gave you a chance to weigh in on um, pointing out that the, that Bertinelli property has changed status. It, the, the old APN is, has changed. Uh, there was a tax default. And given that I know on the other end, at the west end, you were able to do a little easement swap with that property owner. Do you know the current ownership status on the east end and whether there, that might open up the possibility of uh, a swap option to, because if you could tuck the bathroom back in sort of roughly where the trash barrels are now, that would make a world of difference. Further back than that. It's well, going to go into yeah. the bluff so you don't see it when you're looking down well, the coast. Regardless, up, up, up above the, the septic portion rather than out on the... But we can't we can't require them to be swapping land and no we can't but we can't but I'm just asking her if she knows anything about the status of that parcel. Well, when you raised that chair a few minutes ago, yeah, a little, an hour ago now, yeah, it's been later than I thought. Um, we looked at the property and it has not changed hands, and I don't know. Um, yeah. She's Your, the evidence that you have before you to say it has a different APN, for example, but that's not showing up on um, what we use to find out property uh, ownership. Uh, it's, still, it's still Valerie Burton. Now are you looking at the the 2024 parcel map? Because I, I there was confusion. The tax assessor website reports it alternately as either delinquent or the, the parcel number or non-existent. And the parcel map itself, not the website, but the map that they lead you to, the PDF, show, doesn't show that parcel number on there anymore. Yeah, Craig, if they, if they change the parcel number, they would have to come to us and do a, a lot line adjustment, and they haven't. Yeah. So that's wrong. E even in the case of oh, a yeah. default? I actually believe, Chair, I, I believe that you... Um, that the planning commission issued a permit to Ms. Bertinelli, yeah, um, and perhaps a while ago to yeah. read up her house, and I think that's in process. So I do think that this was before you, this these two parcels, and I don't remember exactly the details, um, but I believe there was a lot merger. So maybe that's why it has a different assignment. But as far as the current property um, ownership. We're showing it as okay. Being as Bertinelli. That sounds plausible. And there what was you a just lot said merger. about the merger. Um, nonetheless, did, how, did you ever go to them and say, "Can we negotiate for a, in, in some manner a little piece of little the corner easement to the corner of your parcel?" Or was that never on the table? When it's MRCA and Mahoa negotiated the settlement agreement. It is Mahoa who brought the other, um, as you called them, swaps, I believe you said, but exchanges for easements 
on West Sea Level Drive. On West Sea Level, but you never contemplated anything like that uh, at the East End. I don't believe that there is sufficient property interest there to do that, um, in part because MRCA also owns as a CDP condition um, for Ms. Bertinelli, a uh, public access easement that's immediately to the west of Lot I. So we own Lot I in fee, and we also own a public access easement over the eastern portion of Bertinelli's property. And that, that's the portion, the, the portion that's just been recently cleared with the drainage stuff on it? I don't, recently cleared by Ms. Bertinelli, yes. Yeah, okay, I, right. I, I just, just. And I believe, just to finish, I believe that the easement prohibits a restroom on it. Prohibits? Prohibits. A restroom on it. That's right. So the CDP but it's moot here. but it's okay. So it's 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 moot in this case. Um, all right. So we, thank you, Elena. I think we want to try to keep moving through these points as we can. Where are we? Did we're talking about wave uprush? Have we exhausted that and sea level rise? I think so. Chair, may I uh, make a comment before you move on? Please. Um, just the commissioner peak your your point about the elevations of the bathroom, the differences. So this is a, it's a technicality, but just to clarify the, the plan that you're looking at that you called out that section cut, that's, it's the datum difference. It's the NGVD 29 has that 18 foot elevation. The wave uprush report uses the more current, the NAV D88 datum, which is generally higher. So that's the difference. And, and the, the NAV D finished floor is the 20.44. Exactly. It's yeah. higher. Yeah. Um, so if we're, if we are talking about some of this being a hundred years, but not, but not the bathroom, um, why do, coastal normally asks us for six and a half feet, uh, as the nominal sea rise number, but here, uh, MRCA's third party study wants us to plug in 4.3 feet for a hundred years. How, how do we reconcile those two numbers? It just changed. What changed? The state's number? The coastal number went down from six and a half to four. My understanding, the Coastal Commission changed their number. Right. So the coastal, instead of six and a half, they're saying 4.3? That's what I, that's been, what's been reported. I uh -huh. haven't seen it in writing, but that's been reported. I, I, now I remember Don Schmidt saying something about that. Yeah, okay. Joseph, do you know anything about that? No, I don't have information that I want to respond with. Okay. Um, on the same, on about sea rise, on 143, there's talk about adaptation by adding three feet of revetment to inhibit scour, but are we not allowed to approve something that requires future protection in the uprush zone? The shoreline protection device stuff, if we're like building this in and saying, oh, we might, we're going to put another three feet of revetment on there. Yeah. They did. They did all that work and put rocks in front of their property. So, what would be the difference? They had engineered rock dropped, which I don't know if it's working or not. But where is this? It's not. So, what's the, what's, yeah. the, what's the diff? There is no diff. Oh, the Broad Beach. Right. Broad Beach has to be removed. Yeah, that's right. It's got to be all taken out. Every every rock. Yeah. It was, I guess, temporary was the concept, right? So. Now. So, the, so the question is, and this is for staff, and maybe Richard, you have, might have the, 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 the optimal comment here. Just can we make a plan that is that requires three feet of revetment at some future point, three additional feet of height? The, what you're looking at are comments from our engineers. And I, I'm sorry, I don't have access to them to understand exactly what their comment is and the meaning behind it, but there are comments there, they're looking for answers in plan check. And my concern is that 
that's more of a <laughs> comment along the lines of, as proposed, you're going to need this. What's your response to that? And so what you're approving tonight is the project you have before you. And Joseph can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that there is any part of the project description that allows for additional construction at a later date. And you're correct, Craig, you may not right. approve a revetment. But as Richard says, that's a proposal for the future. They may change the rules 30 years from now. Yeah, you know, and I just I just had it on this page. I'm, it's what I'm reading from is in the staff report. I think my initial notation was it was at page 143 PDF. So that's not, not the same thing I'm reading. I just unless we're on it, let me make sure I'm what I'm talking about. This is <clears throat> no, it's not this. This is from. The Coastal Engineering Review Sheet. Yeah, that's... Okay. Didn't matter to us. Okay. Um, and... Uh, yes? Mr. Peacock, it's part of the record. Do we need to hold up the proceedings, or do we just we catch them up? We still have a quorum. Okay. Um, if the restroom is ancillary or accessory in some way that it, it uh, doesn't need to comply with a hundred year design spec. Um, and so therefore we've spec it can't have a shoreline protection device. No. For some reason they've said this somewhere, PDF 142. Um, then how is it that the OWTS is not ancillary or accessory because it's ancillary to the ancillary structure? Well, what, where does it say you cannot have? Because we approve houses all the time that have less than a hundred year life. Do not we? all the time, but we do. Yeah, sure. 60, 65 years for a house. I thought we required a minimum of no. 75 and, and, and optimally 100. Those are the studies, but we, we have, um, for example, a remodel. They may only have 30 years left in it. We still give them a CDP. No shoreline protect this LIP section 10.4.L. No shoreline protection device shall be permitted for the sole purpose of protecting an ancillary or accessory structures. Uh, st structure shall be removed if determined it's in danger from erosion. Um, so well, that's what we're proposing. You got to take it out. We're proposing an at the bathroom. We're saying it has a 25 year life. And in 25 years, you got to rip it up. They've got to take it out. Yeah. So it can't have it. It can't have a shoreline protection device. Can't Why not? You won't even be able to build this thing. Well, I'm all for this whole thing, but yeah. the bathroom isn't going to work. I agree. Yeah. I mean, we can skip all this another five hours of anything. I think you can get the votes to pass this and get out of here. But it's the bathroom. Yeah. And the bathroom's not going to work any way, shape, or form unless you scoot it uphill and put it in that cove area. That's the only way it's going to work. So I, I tend Craig, to agree. Yeah. I was going to make a motion to approve the project and scrap the bathroom. Is that going to jeopardize their? Right, I don't know. Well, I'd like to. Uh, we, we, there are more notes, and there may be more notes about you know their, on your their thoughts motion. about ADA compliance, et cetera. But I, yeah, yeah, on your motion, I, as, essentially that's what it is. I would yeah. like to second your motion with <clears throat> the provisions we've gone through now. If I could read them and see if you'll accept them, okay? And. And then, just Vice Chair, if I may, Chair, something like that, I would recommend you guys give staff direction to bring back that resolution. Right. Only because yeah. that is so substantive, we want to make sure that. <clears throat> get but everything. I also, my, the next part of that is do you, like, I'm inclined to give them the direction to bring back a different design for the bathroom. Yeah. You know, like, well, that's your totally fine. I just want to be yeah. clear with how you want me to say that. I mean, if you want to ask the applicant, I, of course, won't stand in the way. Or so, yeah. But wouldn't, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he come uh, make so, a motion to come back with a plan that does? That yeah. Includes so a I'm going to I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to ask the applicant right now about that. So, uh, Elena, I don't know if you've been unmuted or not. If you can hear me, I can hear you now. So, I can hear you anyway. I just can't speak to you. No, you're speaking. No, no, we can hear you. Um, so. 
We're and, and the, the gist of this is is that for, for the bulk of the project aside from the restroom, we're sort of okay with it. My reluctant to my reluctance to approving the stairs at the each east end is that I would want to ask for a a different design from you that comes back and eliminates the view impact of the bathroom and basically recesses the bathroom either behind under the stairs and further away from the, the ocean. So I just, I would kind of want to gauge you on that and uh, see if you kind of understand what I'm saying. I believe I understand what you're saying. Um, my answer is going to be short. Um, part of the CDP is in settlement of a potential lawsuit. And that is two parties to the equation. So not booting it to Mahoa, but there's, there's another party that's involved here that represents the residents in the, in the community. And the location of the bathroom was, um, as you might well imagine, a big uh, settlement point with the residents. So I can speak for MRCA, but I can't speak for Mahoa, and I certainly can't speak for our, um, our inability to, we already have a settlement agreement, it's signed, it's finalized, and the CDP comes from it. So it, I don't know. Um, I don't know how more to answer that, um, except for to tell you that it's a two-party settlement agreement and um, it's not unilateral. Well, Scott, I want to comment on that, and that is that this is just like the Resnick property. We don't get involved in, in I, commercial sales. I understand that. And understand. we should do this the right way. <clears throat> and I can't imagine these parties... <coughs> Wanting, not wanting a better solution than that bathroom. So, can I? Um, is Alan available on the phone from Mahoa? Alan, are you there? Yeah. And Alan, you are unmuted. Good evening. Yes, I'm. I'm here. So, are, did you have any comment on what I just proposed? And I, I kind of said it in layman's terms. Well, what I can tell you is that that location is agreed upon between the homeowners association and the MRCA. I understand um, the, that. The the uh, there was extensive ne negotiation about the placement of the bathroom that went on for years. Uh, this is the location arrived at. Can I ask you a question about that discussion? Because you seem to be a party to it for a long time. When that question I may is, not be able to answer it, but you can ask it. Can ask did it. they ever look at putting the bathroom underneath the stairs? Into uh, the, yeah, into they, the cliff. They looked at all the different locations available, and they were discussed with the association and the board of the association and with the MRCA. All, all of this was thoroughly investigated. And, and this so they the so they thoroughly investigated putting the bathroom underneath the stairs so that you don't see it. I I, I believe that's the case. Yes, all, all these locations were investigated. Okay, well, it's uh, not our problem. What's yeah. up? It's really not our problem. So you, you've made a motion. Did you have a second? I, I'm trying to make a second. Yeah. So and, and what I'd oh, like to... oh, So before you make the second, I have a, a question and sort of a comment to all of you guys, which is in my motion... I would like them to come back with something that shows the bathroom being hidden in, in a better location than it is right now. I don't know how you guys think about that, but if that location is under those stairs, it affects us approving those stairs. So do you understand why? So I'm kind of removing that sort of whole east sea level thing and approving the west sea level, approving the gate but not dealing with... Well, well, my impression would be, your motion would be to approve, to, to come back with a plan that moves the bathroom that satisfies the other requirements of the application. There's no approval of anything until it comes back. Um, 
with this this bathroom fixed. Because we can we can sit there all day long. Well, let's prove this, prove right. that, change this, change that. And so we're not really approving anything. We're saying come back with a alternate location for the bathroom, and there's some other items that we go would discuss that should be included in that resolution. Okay, I mean the my reluctance in to do that would only be that we do have a large amount of the property owners in the area that have negotiated existing, and this I'm not going to say blows it up, but sort of blows it up the way it is right now. So, yeah, my, but, my comment on that would be there's a, a plus and minus on everything, okay? They negotiated locking the gate. We can say leave the gate off, okay? That changes a lot, okay, in their negotiations because they can negotiate between each other and decide what they want. We have to decide what the Coastal Commission allows, what we allow, and what's best, okay? And... I don't think we're doing anything that is massively detrimental to the community like removing the gate right. uh, versus putting the bathroom in a better place. Now, I, you know, I understand that. So I, they I, have to I'm give and take, that. too. No, I, I, I very much understand. I'm just, you know, voicing what are the concerns. And I think that the other element that's here is the public, right? Yeah. It's really uh, a shame when you go down to such a beautiful place and you'd have such an eyesore. Exactly, and that's why we're here. So, okay? so if you make that motion, I just I will second it with the provisions. Uh, with the okay, with let's the just go. Let's be clear and go over those provisions. So, my motion is to uh, continue this to a date uncertain. Okay. Uh, whereby the applicant comes forward with a with a drawing that shows the bathroom out of view an alternate plan that in, an alternate relocates plan. the bathroom okay well let me just go through them real quick I just add one, thing, one thing to that it also needs to be something that's a, a little safer for sea rise and all those other things that's yeah. That little part. yeah yeah well they have to engineer that they have to get the land and engineer it and everything yeah. else yeah uh, okay, so uh, let me you, go through that. If you want to go through it, I have a ton more stuff that I'm... And, okay, and well, if nothing else, I want to read for the record okay, if, but if we don't debate it, but let's, at least let's I want to get it on the record. Amend a motion. Okay. Okay, so, no, so here, no, can I read them? Can I read them? So it's, you know... Okay. Okay, so first was resolve the issue of the width of West Sea Level Road. Okay. The second is remove the ice plant. And the reason why I'm critical on that is I've seen many times when the whole hill comes down with the ice plant. Um, so are you, when you're saying remove the ice plant, you're saying remove replant. the ice plant for the whole entire, all the properties that they own? No, no, no. This is just, they own just the end of that little skinny area. Doesn't the MRCA yeah, have all those other lots? Yeah. The, all those other lots aren't in this, in this plant. Okay. Okay, this plan is just here. This is just this hill. The other lots have houses on the other side. Um, the gate conditions are that uh, the gate is automatically opened on loss of power. Okay. The next one is find an alternate location for the bathroom or a better solution. I'll put it that way. Okay. Uh, and then the last one would be uh, depending on the location of the bathroom, if it's a 25-year life, they have to post a bond to remove it at the end of 25 years. Or when it falls. If it's damaged. The, well, if it, if it lasts 25, 25 years and it's not damaged and it's working fine, they well, don't need to remove it. Well, if the sea it. rise hasn't gone up and all that stuff, yeah. Yeah. That's what we've gone okay. so far. That's what's on the and table. So that's my motion. Do you accept that or my at this point, yes. Okay, and, right. and, and, and just Reverend's edification, that is just direction that does not bind any of you no. to a future vote. That no, absolutely. That's yeah. where we're sitting right now. Okay, so just to change the process to accommodate people's appetites here, uh, I want to finish going through some things. Why don't I just read my notes? If somebody hears something they want to object to, just jump in and, you know. Well, Craig, uh, let me just say that yeah. 
These are all comments. Everything we're doing here is comments. Yes. Okay, so all you need to do is make comments. Well, these are specific comments that are going into the record. That's yeah. on a motion yeah. that we're yeah. no. making. Okay, so item 16 about restroom compatibility. They said lot A has no designated zoning. Well, it is single family medium under the LCP, which is a state document. Um, and the fact that it's deed restricted for public access doesn't affect the zoning designation. So, yes, the public access is not affected by that. But to me, the toilet block isn't access, it's a building. It's, it's not an access improvement, it's something you use when you're at the beach. It's, it's, it's about the use of the land once you're there. It's not the actual access. And so to my mind, it is subject to the single family zoning. And under that, the question I would have, and maybe we don't need to answer it now, but if this is staff's gonna look at that, what precedents are there for putting a public bathroom in a single family zoning zone? Well, you could ask the question, well, should it be rezoned? That's all single family zone? Uh, at one point it was. At one point. Is it still? No. It's, it's, a, it's a public zone. I mean, Westward Beach was all single family residences. Yeah, but, all right, Craig, but this is currently a single family zoning. That, that could be changed. That's a point you can make that okay. maybe this should be public open space. I okay. mean, whatever. So there, there, there could be a zoning change in, in line here. Um, <clears throat> slope stability, just, just a point of clarification. The slope stability on the, on the bathroom is not up to spec, but they say that with mitigation, no, I'm just, I don't, I'm just kind of going from memory here now, but that with mitigation, they could get it to spec, but, and maybe this is for, for either Richard or uh, Joseph, doesn't the slope stability spec, that's, that's what you start with. What, what is the hillside? It's not, can we mitigate it and get it to spec? Chair, didn't yeah. we just, like, we, you're still talking about the bathroom and that's something that's going to yeah. go away. Why are we talking about it? Is it going to go away? Well, we'll find the, out. If, we, if his the motion that he made and seconded, yes, that's right. not even to be talked about right now. It's stuff to get in the record because we don't know yeah, if they're going to come back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that's all I'm doing basically. Okay, I'm going as quick as I can. Um, there is no demolition plan yet. They said they when we said that before, they said, well, we have to comply with grading and drainage, so we're good. But there, but but what are they going to do with that whole retaining wall? There is that going to fall on somebody's head or chunks of concrete roll out into the surf or what? There, there is no demolition plan here. So we're going to need that. Um, public restroom. MR, they say MRCA has a fiduciary obligation to use this property in a manner that maximizes public coastal access. Well, A, this is an access per se, the, the bathroom. And B, you also have an affirmative duty to protect and preserve the environment, which would itself be adversely impacted by more human presence and permanent materials like concrete and steel. So I don't, th I don't think there's necessarily, I mean, just speaking to the point of we don't want that bathroom there, I don't think it's uh, spe specifically required. Okay, new notes. Uh, we've talked about views. We've talked about how the, in the past how there's grading that they haven't accounted for in all this. Uh, I don't find my note for it now, but I noticed. Um, Parker, could you put up the picture of, it's the oblique view of the west side, the stairs on the west side, and they have a measurement of the height of the retaining wall. You put the elevations on? It's an oblique. It's not exactly an elevation. It's It's a... It's, oh, it's the one. When you're looking at the block. Yeah, and it, and it's it's um, they put. See that drawing for the other one with the bathroom. At our request, they put no, not mine. On on the west end, it would be somebody help me. What what page is this? Was it in the staff presentation? Yeah. Well, was it? Well, okay. So I'm going to start. I'm just going to talk about it. It, it, yeah, it's either that one or one that's that shows the numbers of the elevations of the different levels on it. Is that the one? It, well, if you look at it, I'm going to have to ha make some hand gestures up here. They spec the top of the the level of the retaining wall at one height. They spec the landing of the stairs at 
12 feet below that. So they're basically saying we're doing a 12. 11 and a half. That's not what I was looking at, but that might have the number on it. But they expect the landing at, at exactly 12 feet. And if you look at the drawing they have as they've imposed it, the retaining wall goes down below that then another couple feet. So they're not talking about a 12 foot retaining wall. They're talking about a 12, a 14, possibly 15. There's a picture. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're on the stairs up. up. There, there's a version that looks exactly like that, with but elevations. with elevations noted on it. Yeah. Well, your, your point is to, to comply with 12 feet. The, yeah, and the point is that under the proposal and the design spec they have, they're going. I don't think we're allowed to approve a retaining wall over 12 feet, and they've spec'd it at 12 feet, but the, the way they've drawn the lines, they've left out a couple feet below that, that it's, it's like a 15-foot retaining wall. Well, just the comment is, make it 12. Okay, so you need to do is design. Make it 54. Chair, if I may. Yeah. They've requested a variance for that retaining wall height. But that gets you up to 12, right? The 12 feet comment is where we talk about a combination of walls. A retaining wall, however, a retaining one, a single retaining wall shall be no higher than six feet. So they've asked for a variance of a, a single retaining wall right. that's in excess. Um, do we approve retaining walls in excess of six feet? Yes. yes. We approve them, um, for example, if it's a retaining wall to protect a building pad behind a structure that can't be seen, <laughs> that's yeah. 18 feet. So well, I'm not too sure. The 12 feet is talks about the combination of walls shall not uh, exceed. That's when you have two six foot walls where, separated where, 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 by three feet. But there's, but my understanding was the variance for a single wall was capped at 12. Well, no? Just make it comply with the code. No. That's all. Well, then he's saying it's not the code now. So the variance, you know. <clears throat> yes, they're processing a variance so that they can exceed yeah. what the code allows. All right. All right, on top of all that, I, I, nobody has the appetite for this. I have two pages of findings, perhaps two dozen findings that I can't make currently. I'll just list the, the, the numbers on them and then you can reference them later. Uh, section A, General Coastal Development Permit, LCP A1, A2, A3, B, B1, B3, B8, B10, C2, C3, C7, C8, D1, D2, D7, G1, uh, something in the hazards, I didn't mention, okay, J3, M, G1, I said that already, right? Yeah, would not, G1 is would not appreciably change existing available views in the area and would have no adverse scenic or visual effects. Yeah, and we'll get all those yeah. when the staff report comes back with more of them. Okay, so just, just to, you know, help them out and having listed those things, they can look and see what some of the concerns were and when they bring something back to us, they won't be as surprised if we don't like it. Okay, well, so let's move the question. <coughs> but so, and... And so I just want to be sure. So I have I've written down the motion from Commissioner Peak, seconded by Vice Chair Maza, as amended. as amended with the with the four or five feet. I got that. Um, Chair Hill, I, I must admit, I was here paying attention and listening, of course, but I did not write down every iota of things that you just said. So I want to go back to the motion maker and the person second it once again. You're not bound by any of this. If any of those issues are not in the formal motion, you, you are still free to raise them in their entirety and flesh them out in all of their complexity at the next meeting. I just want to be sure yeah. that you understand that where we're kind of coming from. Sure. If you come back and say, hey, I don't see anything about the... Uh, no, no, I, I, I'm trying to be helpful in just calling Perfect. out. Those are, those are points of particular concern. Somebody mm -hmm. will hear those letters. They'll look it up. They'll go, uh-huh, yeah, okay, we better address that. That's what we pay Joseph for. Yeah. I just want to be sure that, and then so that if, if one of them gets, hopefully it doesn't, but if it gets missed, it's not a slight on you. We're not, staff is not. Right. Avoiding. And so this, this yes, is yes. a motion for continuance to Correct. evade uncertainty. Correct. With, with, all these, with okay. these issues. All right. So, um, I think we're waiting for Rebecca whenever she's ready. Okay, you ready? I, I think as a point of clarification, Please. the way I heard the motion. 
was to continue the item to a date uncertain with a request the applicant bring back an alternate location for the bathroom with lower view impacts, resolve the issue of West Sea Level Road with remove the ice plants in the area of the proposed development, add a condition for gates to automatically unlock in the event of the loss of power, and add a condition requiring MRCA to post a bond to remove the restroom in the event of encroachment due to sea level rise. Does that accurately reflect your motion? Yes, I, I have to say one thing before we vote because it's the, something that was that kind of plagued me throughout and I somehow didn't get out tonight directly, but um, the whole question of is the bathroom required for ADA compliance and what is, and you know, do you have to, and trying to weigh you know, if you go to Big Sur, you're not expecting there to be a bathroom. It's, it's a nature wilderness experience. If you go to Santa Monica, of course there's a bathroom. And where do you draw the line? And we asked them, what is the requirement on ADA? And the answer we got back was, well, ADA is an F, it's a federal thing, and, 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 and we just really want a bathroom here. So I, I would like some, some greater justification for that bathroom, because to me, I don't feel like everybody in the world should have to be able to get to every beach in the world. That's a valid point, and, and, and they can come back with that. I, and they can come I back can with that. I can tell you I have an experience with what's required, and that is I have a house in Laguna. It's got a cliff. The this, this city shook down a developer for a million bucks to put a stairway in. And no, no ramps and no bathroom. So my neighbor sued him, said you got to follow ADA because he was trying to kill the stairway. And the court came back and said, yeah, except government agencies can violate ADA if they have a reason. <laughs> so what, 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 what I would like to hear is something like, you know, uh, yeah, if there's a beach five miles away that has the bathroom, then, then you're fine. But if it's, you know, 20 miles away, then, then you really need to have, like, some, some rule that, that tells us it's actually required here in some way, because... Okay, well, we got that. Okay. Let's Chair, if I may, in light of the applicant's comment about the last hearing, uh, would you like, uh, just asking if we would like to double check the applicant hasn't raised their hand uh, in regards if they're even willing to cooperate with the motion? Uh, being that this is their project. No, I think I think we just want to make the motion. Yeah. That's why in front of us. Yeah. Roll call, please. Yes. This was a request for maker and seconder to. So the maker is accepting and the. We we can't. We're not hearing you. I'm sorry, I thought I still had it on. No, this is just a request for information. It's not a requirement. This is all coming back for re re review. This is just anecdotal. So we don't need to add it to the... Uh, you, don't yeah. need, you don't want to add it to your... Motion. No. But okay. then it doesn't need to. I appreciate the clarification. Commissioner Peake. Yes. Vice Chair Mazza. Yes. Commissioner Leonard. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Chair Hill. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, in honor of Matt Rapp... Uh, longtime Malibu resident who deserves everything we can give him in accolades. I move we adjourn. Here, here. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>